NBC Sports, home of the Olympic Games, the NHL, the Triple Crown, the NASCAR playoffs, and primetime's number one show, Sunday Night Football, only on NBC. The Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas is a sporting hotspot. Folks here really love the outdoors. And just 20 miles north of downtown Fort Worth is Texas Motor Speedway, one of the most thrilling tracks the NTT IndyCar Series visits each and every year. Speaking of exciting, Team Penske's Simon Pagano produced a blockbuster finish at the Indy 500 just two weeks ago. The Frenchman scored the biggest win of his racing life, and it showed. Five-time series champion Scott Dixon enjoyed success at this track three times. The most recent was just last year. He was also victorious last Sunday in Detroit and wants to keep the mojo. That Detroit double hitter was a bittersweet weekend for points leader Joseph Newgarden, who won on Saturday but crashed Sunday. He'll need to rally here to stay on top. And being first is where Takuma Sato is on tonight's grid. The Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan driver was brilliant in qualifying yesterday and is looking for his second victory on the season right here in the Lone Star State. Nice to see a packed grid in preparation for tonight's 248 lap race right here at Texas Motor Speedway. Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy here. Round nine already of the season. This one will tip us over the halfway point of the championship. Townsend, it's the second of five ovals on this year's championship, but very, very different to Indianapolis where we've just come from. So how so? How different? Well, it's a very difficult track here at Texas. They say everything's bigger here in Texas. I think the drivers go bigger when they're here in Texas. They're going to take risks that you don't normally see on the rest of the schedule. There's something about when the lights come on and the light goes down, sun goes down here. The drivers just go big. I talked to rookie sensation Santino Ferrucci just a little while ago. He said, man, I miss Indy. This place is so much harder. Paul, there, there, there's a there's a big build up to this race. For what reason? Well. Eddie Gossage that runs this track puts on a big show. He loves to entertain the crowd, but this is a very daunting track. It's the only high bank track we have on the schedule, and there's big speeds and always big crashes. And it's been a very busy time in the series as well. This is the fifth weekend in a row. But before we go forward, let's look in the rearview mirror for a moment because we've come fresh off a very busy weekend in the Motor City. It's race two of this double header weekend. Let's go racing in Detroit on Belle Isle. Superstar Newgarden, but Rossi on the inside. Inside, inside, watch out, watch out. Oh, there was oh. contact in the middle. A multi car crash on the opening lap. Multiple pit stops. Race leader Scott Dixon did not stop. Scott Dixon has lost pace. The tires have gone away, and a 21 year old American by the name of Santino Ferrucci leading this race. Spencer Piggott into the wall. Bourdais got into the back of him. I think Hinchcliffe's going to come out in the lead. Joseph Newgarden right here. Rossi to the inside. Oh, Newgarden no. is inside. We all slid. Everything's totally fine. Ferrucci has to pit under yellow. This really cost him. Rosenquist, what has happened? Big crash at turn one. The red flag comes out. Scott Dixon leads the way. Marcus Erickson, the rookie, is in second. Green, green, green. Can Erickson get his first podium? Run like hell. Run down Dixon. Brilliant restart once again from Scott Dixon. The checkered flag is there for Dixon in Detroit. Yeah! I just drove the wheels off it and they did all the strategy and the strategy is what nailed it. So I can't believe that we ended up here today and it's fantastic. That was an amazing comeback from Scott Dixon, who crashed on Saturday, came back to win on Sunday. It moved him up one position in the points. He sits fourth. Sato, tonight's pole sitter, is fifth. But it was very handy work from Joseph Newgarden, despite crashing on Sunday, was still able to maintain the championship points lead over Alexander Rossi and Simon Pagano. But the man in fourth was the man here last year. That's Scott Dixon. He's with Kevin Lee. And Lee, after the Indianapolis 500, everybody starts thinking a little bit more about the championship. And after that first raid in Detroit, it was uh, the first time in about five years you had crashed on your own. Were you starting to get concerned about the ability to defend that championship? I think a lot of the time you think about like that 100-point mark, and I think we were we were breaching that pretty closely. I think we were 93 points out or something. So it was nice to get that flip. You know, I think uh, race race one in Detroit. You know, we were last, Joseph won, uh, which created that big uh, difference, and then we were able to flip that the next day. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why the 
point mark kind of always seems to be that breach for us but uh you know we, we've come from just about that deficit i think in maybe 13 uh to win the championship but um obviously you want to be leading last year i think we took the lead in the championship at this race um today that's probably going to be almost impossible so we'll, we'll keep our heads down and try and make the most of it you know the car the pnc bank car last year was just on rails so you know hopefully uh we can have a good car tonight you know keep that role going and and uh, get some momentum you know for the last part of the season kelly a win here tonight for scott dixon would be his fourth at texas which would tie elio castroneves for the most well joseph newgarden already has a pair of wins and a pair of runner-up finishes this season and when i asked you last time about the season long points you told me it was too early but now that we've reached that mid-season point how significant are those 14 points 15 excuse me well we're getting there you know it's um it clicks off fast this season, but I think we're in a good position. You always want to lead instead of be chasing. So for us to still be in the lead in points is great. We just got to make sure we maintain now. You know, it's uh, it gets this this championship is difficult. It can sway so quickly and you'd be looking good one moment and looking bad the next. So we've got to stay on top of it. It starts uh, obviously with tonight. We've got to have a good race. And I think our Fitzgerald car has been it's been fast. It's been consistent. We're up there. We're close enough. Seventh spot's a good starting spot for us. So, um, yeah, I feel confident. I think Chevrolet's given us a good racing package and try and make good use of it tonight. All right, just one top 10 finish, if you can believe it, Robin Miller, for Joseph Newgarden in seven starts here. Thanks, Kelly. All right, he's 42. He looks like he's 22, and he's racing like he's 32. He's fifth in the points. He's got two poles, a victory, two thirds. Does life begin at 40, buddy? Can do. How old are you? Oh, no, I'm 70. <laughs> you, you're the one that's, you're, I mean, you're four yeah. years old and you're driving like you're 22. I, I feel really comfortable, you know. My, my Because they, um, I started racing when I was 20, it's a good offset, you know. Before, I think it caught on heart or alive, you know. I had no idea for the racing, but the uh, it's now it's a great mixture of the older generations. And, uh, you know, I feel really comfortable. Physically, mentally, I'm ready. All right, Lee Diffie. This kid is ready again, and like you said, he's driving as best as he's ever driven in his career. He, Takuma Sato. He's certainly more consistent this year, that's for sure, Robin. So wishing Takuma Sato a uh, productive evening. Paul, one thing springs to mind when you think about Texas Motor Speedway, and you hear it from the drivers all the time. They use the word brave. So why do you have to bring so much more bravery to this track? Well, this track is like no other track that we go to. Because of the banking, you can run too wide, and as we get into the dark, it's going to be three wide, and there's guys going to be stuffing it down the inside, and they're going to be running nose to tail, side by side, packs cars, and it's just re you got to be really committed. Yeah, you think about that. The qualifying speeds were 220 miles an hour over this one and a half mile track. Uh, Paul brought up an interesting point daylight to dark is that a big deal it is a big deal because you're going to start with a setting sun there's a lot of glare as we ride on board with james hinchcliffe last year here glare coming through turn three you rely on the spotters critically and it's not easy when it's daylight because right now you're going to see hinch get loose right here at the trioval watch this he's not even into the corner yet nowhere near the banking and that car's already getting sideways on him so it's gnarly from start to finish all night long but there's something about when it gets dark, it's like the werewolf mode comes out in everybody. And somebody goes big, and then somebody else goes bigger, and it's one big game of chicken out there. It's intense. You're going to love it. No limits Texas, right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's what we have here tonight. Well, Simon Paginot brought a little French flair to the month of May. That's where he dominated. And he has vaulted himself in the championship. We'll hear from the Team Penske driver next. Did you know you can get even more IndyCar with the NBC Sports Gold IndyCar Pass? You can watch every qualifying and practice session live and on demand. Visit NBCSports.com slash IndyCar now to find out more and to get your IndyCar Pass. As we welcome you back to Texas, who said you can't be noisy in the library? This is in downtown Fort Worth at the Public Library, on the streets of the Public Library. There were hundreds and hundreds of people turned out in their lunchtime, and there were some local school students there as well for a, kind of a carb day at Indy style pit stop competition. And Lone Star JR, Johnny Rutherford, was the official starter. And Team 22 from Penske and Simon Pagenaud, they kept their winning ways going. What a period this has been for Simon Pagenaud. He is in the best spot of his career right now and you know at each and every ntt indycar series race you expect team penske to be in the mix last week in detroit a race and a whole weekend that roger penske and his business promote well they certainly were in the mix but it wasn't all celebrations
Let's go racing in Detroit. Pit is left. Joseph Newgarden, perfectly timed pit stop. He was in the lane right as the yellow came out and cycles to the front. Will Power in his stall. Your right front's not done. And there goes the right front tire. Believe this. I mean, come on, guys. That is so un Penske like. On his way to the checkered flag, Newgarden wins in Detroit. We really wanted this one. I feel pumped for Team Penske today. It's race two of this double header weekend. Green, green. Superstar Newgarden. A multi car crash on the opening lap. And Simon Pagano, the Indy 500 champ, is in that. Wow, how much can change in a week? For Will Power. His string of bad luck continues. He's going to be coming furiously from the back of the grid. Keep digging, bud. I think he will do. Rossi to the inside. Oh, Newgarden no. is inside. Oh. Look at Newgarden. He is furious. Will Power, how on earth he is in third place after everything that has happened to him today. The checkered flag is there for Dixon. Power with a comeback story. Good job all day there. We worked hard for that one. This recent passage in the championship has been so crucial to bag as many points as you can. Remember, double points at the Indy 500. And then last weekend in Detroit, two lots of points with that duel in Detroit. And Simon Pagano has come out the best, getting 204 points over the last month. So that has been a valuable time. And he's with Jan Bikas. Jan? And Lee, what an incredible month of May for Penske Racing, for Simon Pagano. And Simon, I know you're still riding the wave of that Indy 500 victory, but I imagine now it's kind of focus on turning towards the championship. Absolutely, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, obviously, it's been, uh, it is the most incredible time of my life, so quite frankly, it's uh, a dream come true. But um, most importantly, I just feel like it makes sense with everything, all the sacrifice that I had to do in my life to get to this point. So, but I tell you what, it's a dream to drive for Team Penske. I've got the best guys in the business, and uh, right now we are uh, we're in a position to fight for the championship. And you know me, I want a second one, so we're going to fight uh, tonight. I think we've got a good chance. We have a, a really good, uh, really good car here always. So uh, it's going to be a, you're going to have to be patient tonight. I think very patient, and there at the end, of course, is uh, is the key to success here. So we we'll see what we can do in the second half of the season, but um, we're definitely on the strong side. All right, the Indy 500 champ, hoping to take this momentum on the high banks of Texas, Lee. And Jan, he was lucky enough to have his mum with him at Indy and his best friend who came over from France. You know, not a lot's changed with the car. The team has done a good job to give it to Simon the way that he would like it and the way he'd like to drive it. But the biggest change in Simon Pagano this year has been psychological. He's got his mind around the situation and he has made himself better. And right here at Texas, he's had an interesting string of results, hasn't he, lately? He really has. And you have to remember that this is the oval where Simon Pagano first was introduced to ovals back in 2012. So he has more experience here than any other, where on, uh, any other place on the schedule. But the last three years have been particularly impressive if you think about this. 2016, a fourth, then a third, then a second. So he's been methodically marching his way to the top step of the box here at Texas. And he's got a great car and that huge wave of momentum after completing his Oval Apprenticeship and winning the Indy 500. So frankly, it's all gravy from here. And I think Pagano could do it tonight. And the guy who knows the feeling of what Simon's experiencing right now, Paul, is his Penske teammate, Will Power. So where do you see Power at at the moment, uh, considering the way that things were going? And then he had that dramatic turnaround at Detroit to dig himself out of trouble at uh, the, the most appropriate time. Yeah, I mean, it all went wrong right at the beginning of Detroit race two, and he was stalled on track. But he has said himself, it's been a really bad year for him. He's had bad luck, he's had bad pit stops, and he's made mistakes, yep. and he's had crashes. But he's a driver that can get on a big streak or he can go in a big low. Uh, right now, it's kind of on a low. Yep. So I look to what Scott Dixon said about being 100 points behind. He's on the cusp of that if he doesn't have a good race tonight. Well, here last year, he was at the top of the points, but there was a change in the championship at the top, and it was a change that Will Power wasn't looking forward to. It's time for IndyCar racing in the Lone Star State. Let's get rolling here in Texas. Trouble on the track. Trouble front straight away. Two cars collide. That's the number 12 of Will Power. The Indianapolis 500 winner and points leader is out of this race. Under the lights here in the Lone Star State, it's the Kiwi, Scott Dixon, who wins well and takes the lead of this championship. Make a job, boys. And Dixon parked the PNC Bank Honda 
on top of the championship at this race last year, as you just saw, and never let it go. All the way through to Sonoma, California, and his fifth championship win. It was an amazing scene. At the other end of the spectrum of their careers are the rookie crop. A pair of Americans, a pair of Swedes, and they've had a lot to talk about this year. We'll tell you more about that after the break. Getting closer and closer to the start of the DXC Technology 600. This is round nine of the NTT IndyCar Series here at Texas Motor Speedway. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful evening, but it's been warm. It's been in the 80s and uh, things will cool off. Not cooling off for these guys though. Marcus Erickson, Colton Herter, Felix Rosenquist and Santino Ferrucci, the rookie crop, well, part of the rookie crop of 2019. It's been a really interesting year for these young men. Streets of St. Petersburg, the big hype around Felix Rosenquist. Well, he delivered top five result in his first race, but one going even better was Colton Herter, the youngest to ever win an IndyCar race at just 18. That was in Circuit of the Americas. And then at the Indy Grand Prix of Indianapolis, Rosenquist got his first career pole, the NTT P1 award. Indy 500, it was all about Santino Ferrucci. Top 10 finish and Rookie of the Year at the 500. And then just last weekend on the streets of Belle Isle, Detroit, Marcus Erickson and his Arrow Schmidt Peterson Honda got his first podium, finished a fine runner up to Scott Dixon as we welcome you back. Paul, I want to ask you about this rookie crop and who's impressed you the most so far? Well, they're all impressive, but uh, Colton Herta, I think, came in with a lot of hype and he delivered on that hype with a win and he's been fast at every single track we've gone to. He's been running right up front, but as of late, hasn't been scoring any points and he's at the bottom of the points of the rookie crop yeah so he's, he's had quite a few uh dnfs as far as mechanicals townsend how about for you well when you think of rookies you you think of the challenges of learning and the steep learning curve but nobody has impressed me more than santino ferrucci in terms of his ability to finish races look at the laps completed and the percentage, I want to focus on that, 99.7% of all laps this season he's completed. Not only does that lead the rookie crop, that's the best in the field, better than every other veteran driver. That's unheard of. It's never happened before in our sport, and I'm super impressed at the consistency and the, the race craft of Santino Ferrucci. Not sure he wins the haircut competition, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk more rookies with Jan Bikas. Jan? And let's talk to the rookie who had that incredible finish in Detroit race number two. We saw you in front of the fountain hoisting that trophy, and you said you've had speed all year, but there you and the team executed. That had to feel great. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Uh, I think, like you said, you know, all year we've had quite good pace, but it's always been something happening that sort of prevented us from getting the results. And uh, just felt like everything came together that uh, that race in Detroit, and to finish it off with a with a P2 and a podium was was a great feeling for me, but also for the whole RSPM team. You know, it's been a tough year, but they've been working so hard. So yeah, great reward, and you know, gives us momentum going forward. So you have momentum here, but now we have the high banks of Texas. You did a rookie test here, and now after Indy, you're feeling more comfortable in these high banks around other cars? Yeah, I mean, when I did my rookie test here, it was my first ever oval, and that was extremely difficult, I would say. Uh, but luckily, you know, coming back here after the month of May, I was feeling so much more comfortable from lap one, and I felt like we had really good pace, all practice sessions here, and unfortunately, in qualifying, we didn't have the best run, so we're starting a bit further back than we would have liked, but we feel that we have a good uh, race car, so I'm looking forward to moving up through the field. All right, Lee, he mentioned it. He starts in 14th, and as a rookie, whew, that's going to be wild. Yeah, he said learning all the time. And even this guy, the most experienced in the field, Tony Kanaan, TK, he will tell you he's still learning all the time, even after all these years. He can remember his rookie days like they were yesterday. This incredible career that Tony has been the architect of. He's achieved so much, including being a series champion, including being an Indianapolis 500 winner. And for the teams and manufacturers that he's driven for, People just have praise and great words for Tony Kanaan. Well, it's a really special night tonight because he draws level with the legend, AJ Foyt, who happens to be his boss on his 369th start. Second all time, and they're both with Robin Miller. Lee, this is the Iron Man, Tony Kanaan. This is the old man, AJ Foyt, who's also one of the great race drivers of all time. Now, TK, 309 consecutive starts, but more importantly, 369, and you tie this guy for the most starts the only guy ahead of is Mario Andretti. Did you ever think it lasts this long? No, and honestly, to tie something that AJ has done in his career, I, I don't even have words for it. I, I never thought about it. I never think I would achieve half of his uh, 
his accomplishments, and which I think I never will. But be racing for him and be able to do that today, uh, it's awesome. We, we've been uh, we had a pretty difficult weekend. I've heard a lot of things in the last two days that uh, we're going to prove people wrong. We're here for uh, to make this team better, and I want to make this man proud. All right, a few years ago, you told me, I said, are any of these guys capable of being 1960s drivers? And you said Tony Kanaan could because he was a tough guy. So what do you think now? He's still a tough guy. You seen that yesterday when he rubbed the wall. He's still tough. All right. Now, you got to turn this thing around. So are you going to shake it up or are you going to just yell at people, throw a computer, any, any plan? I think we're going to do whatever it takes. All right. The old man and the iron man, keep your eye on them. Number 14, they're starting last. They won't be there long, Lee Diffie. Nothing like being in the Lone Star State with Super Tex. And congratulations to Tony. When the green flag drops, he draws level with his boss. Second most all-time starts at 369. What about this guy? Alexander Rossi chasing Simon Pagano. It's going to be on tonight. Please remain standing as the Euless Police Department Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. <coughs> Here to offer tonight's invocation is Brett Schisler with Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries. Would you please join me in prayer? Most loving and gracious God, we come to you tonight and we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful evening and this chance to come together and to pray as free people. Lord, we think about the men and women all over the world and nearby that help to keep us free, and we ask that you guide and direct and keep each one of them safe. Lord, we especially come to you tonight and we ask for safety for the drivers. We ask you to be with them, with all of the crews, the fire safety workers, and with our world. And finally, Lord, we come to you tonight and we ask that you would help us to understand and to do your will. It is in the strong and beautiful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come and we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Fast Lane Four. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet time for the Fast Lane 4 for their performance of our national anthem and a big thanks to the T-38s from the 88th Fighter Training Squadron Shepard Air Force Base Wichita Falls Texas for tonight's flyover sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but that was perfect timing for the flyover that was fantastic all right more in the pre-race build-up let's hear from a four-time IndyCar Series champion with Jan and with his best ever start at Texas Motor Speedway, Sebastian Bourdais starting third. In fact, you did the fastest lap of anyone in qualifying. You weren't too necessarily confident of pace, but then in qualifying, it all came together. No, I, I knew we were the fairly fast car. I didn't know it was going to be that quick. But uh, yeah, more. I was more worried about the race stream situation, traffic, how we were handling in traffic. And uh, we're going to get an answer tonight. And that answer, have you been able to learn that speed you got from qualifying? Can you apply that to that race setup? No, it's got it's two different exercises. We, we're just going to you know, hope that the little changes we made are, are going to go in the right direction for that tail master on that over 18 and uh, go from there. It's a long night. All right. It is a long night. 600K for Sebastian Bourdais. He has a lot of experience, and they'll be tuning on this car. But I do know they did make some changes based on qualifying. And Jan, he scored his best ever qualifying here in Texas. Maybe it can be his best ever race result tonight. He got eighth last year, and that was a career highlight. This track hasn't been too kind to him, so we'll see what he can do. There's his countryman, Simon Pagano, the Indy 500 
champ ready to go. 31st race for IndyCar here at Texas Motor Speedway and 20 different winners over the 30 years so far. That's an amazing record, but this is a pretty amazing track. And it's time to bring the action in the Lone Star State when we come back. Five weeks ago, the drivers of IndyCar began one of the most physically challenging stretches in all of racing, the road race at Indy. Imagine oh, on the outside. Oh, 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 oh. The stress of making the field for the Indy 500. Has he knocked Alonso out? He has! Oh. And the breathless precision to prove who is the fastest. The Indy 500, where a career can be defined forever. And where a 500-mile race came down to the final lap. Simon Pagano sweeps the month of May and wins. He's made an Indy 500. Then on to the doubleheader in Detroit, where one winner outlasted the rain. Newgarden wins in Detroit. And another, the Rex. Four races and just under a 1,000 miles later, 22 drivers will once again prove why they are the best in the world because the final test in this span is the night race at Texas with its high speeds and high banks, whereas the sun sets, sparks fly, and temperature on the track heats up. Tomorrow, this five-week stretch comes to a close, but tonight it's time to race just under 400 miles until you can breathe again. For the second time this year, the NTT IndyCar Series is in the Lone Star State. This time, though, it's Texas Motor Speedway for the DXC Technology 600, and it is round nine of the 17-round 2019 championship. It is a beautiful evening here in Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it's just perfect. It's been warm throughout the day, but that's going to cool off as the shadows take effect and nighttime kicks in over this 248 lap race, some 600 kilometers. And this one is always action packed. Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, almost ready to go racing here at Texas Motor Speedway. You guys have competed here several times throughout your uh, careers. Just as a spectator and as a fan, you kind of feel as though you have to hold your breath here sometimes because the action is so wild. Is it like that from the cockpit? Absolutely. I mean, this is the racing equivalent of like a giant Texas tornado. It just sucks you into the action and you really have only one choice, which is to buy in and go all in and go big. And it leads to this kind of racing four wide a couple of years ago. This was a huge shot with Joseph Newgarden. So sometimes you go big, sometimes it goes horribly wrong in a big way. Sato and Dixon got together back in 2017. The lights come out, the sun goes down, and it gets crazy. And it's about to all go down in a few minutes here. Paul, do you think that the drivers actually drive differently here? Well, every, everything's big in Texas, right? So it's really important tonight that these guys stay up on top of their tools and on the setup change because we're starting in the hot with the sun up and it's going to go to dark and the track's going to change and the cars are going to change all right i don't think we do this all that often but we will tonight we'll have a little bit of fun pt i'll start with you who's going to win this thing Ooh, uh let me uh, i've been told that i uh favor too many american drivers so i'm going to go for a <laughs> foreigner I'm going to go for Scott Dixon tonight. Okay. All right. Townsend? I'm not afraid to pick American drivers, especially not in Texas. So I have a funny feeling that this could be the night for Ryan Hunter Rays in a different car than he had at Indianapolis. The car's fast. He's starting up front. He's a big, strong guy on a difficult track and a challenging night where it's time to go brave. And I just feel like RHR is my guy. I think uh, I would agree with that, too. I think as far as the percentages are concerned, it could swing to Ryan Hunter Ray's way. Don't forget Graham Rahal runs very well here as well and his teammate Takuma Sato is on the pole position. There is so much to talk about, so much to look forward to and have a look at this. Drivers in this field who have experienced victory here three times for Scott Dixon. A lot of success for Dixon. Will Power, no stranger to victory lane. Kanan Carpenter and then of course Graham Rahal with that sensational finish back in 2016. Any one of these guys can be a player tonight. Just the second race for Ed Carpenter, Paul. What does what your racing gut tell you about Ed tonight? 
Well, he had a really good run at Indy, and he looked pretty good here in practice. Didn't qualify as well as he would have liked, but I expect him in that new red car to be pretty racy. He changed up the color because he said there was too many other blue and black cars out there, so we're going to have to pay attention to that red one tonight. He wasn't all that thrilled with his qualifying performance, but he said, hey, I've started further back than where I'd like to be here, and I've gone to the front. So Ed Carpenter, the oval specialist, keep your eyes out for that 20 that Auto Geek Chevrolet. So just about everything is complete in the pre-race build-up, ready to go. It's always big under the lights at Texas Motor Speedway. So let's take you trackside now for the command. Here to give the command to start engines for tonight's race, please welcome your Grand Marshal, SciTech Discovery Center students, Jackson Baker and Bella Ahern. Go now, drivers. Start your engines. Starting up. Ryan Hunter Ray comes to Texas off back to back top five finishes, but that's not good enough for Captain America. He told me this team has been too quiet this season. If they're going to really make a shot at the championship, that has got to change tonight. Brian Hunter Ray going for his first Texas win, starting fourth tonight, Kevin Lee. Kelly Alexander Rossi has been great on super speedways, already two wins, and you know he'll be strong tonight. He's got a different looking car also here tonight, but his plan was like Simon Pagano for the 500. He had a fast car, wanted to qualify up front and run up front, but a miscommunication of qualifying has him starting in 11. He'll be patient. Watch for him in the second half of the race. Jan Bikas. And Kevin Willpower starting in 15th position. That's his worst qualifying position in over four years. But don't count him out. He says, I love my race car. And most importantly, from the cockpit, I can change this car as the conditions change. That'll be important, Robin Miller. John, James Hinchcliffe has shown some speed this year. But all he's got to show in the standings, he's, he's in eighth place. That's where he starts tonight. He's had a fourth and a fifth. He hadn't won a race since Iowa last year when he dominated. But a couple years ago, he almost won this. Graham Rahal beat him by about six inches. He likes going fast. He likes this racetrack. And if anybody's due to win a race, it's probably Hinchcliffe, Mr. Diffie. Ah, we'll see. He was pleased with his qualifying performance. And we'll see how Hinch performs this evening. There is the Honda two-seater driven by Elio Castro Neves. And right behind Elio is Jim Montgomery, the Dallas Stars head coach. We'll see if we can check in with Jim. Hi, Jim. Lee Diffie here. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. How's the ride? The ride's incredible. The adrenaline is like a Stanley Cup playoff game. <laughs> All right. Well, you enjoy it. You're in very good hands there with Elio Castro Neves, a three-time Indy 500 winner. I'm with the best. We'll let Jim, that's a, quite the honor to be at the head of the field here at Texas Motor Speedway. We'll let Jim enjoy the rest of his ride. As we walk you through the grid at the top there, Takuma Sato, best ever starting position here, and alongside Scott Dixon, who was narrowly beaten to the pole position. How about Connor Daly? He is back, and that's the Gallagher on board. The Clydell Manufacturing in-car camera shows us this view for Santino Ferrucci. With thanks to NTT Data, we'll follow Felix Rosenquist's progress just like this. Love that front cam like that. The game bridge on board, Zach Beach. Zach loves this place, drives very well here. Maybe he'll give us some special views. And then James Hinchcliffe, we were just riding along with the Lucas Oil on board. We'll see if Hinch can star tonight. Fleet Cost and Care, it's a Texas-based company, and they give us the view here aboard Graham Rahal's number 15 Honda. Ryan Hunter Ray, we were just talking about Captain America. Auto Nation brings us this view and also for Alexander Rossi as well. It is the Auto Nation on board shot. So, all set up, ready to go. Paul Tracy, what do you think about tonight? Well, what are we going to see? It's going to be slick for a little while. We just had the NASCAR trucks last night, long race, and nothing's been on track since. So, the sun is out right now. The track temperature is still hot it's up at 113 degrees in the corner so it's going to be slick for a little bit nice grid up there on the back straight you can see the brightness of the sun and the heat it's 112 degrees out there on the track 103 on the front straight and the temperatures are going to drop very quickly here over the next 30 minutes this race is one that is anticipated it's looked forward to for a long time no limits texas 
We'll see about no limits. Let's go in the Lone Star State. Scott Dixon on pole center to Kuma Sato. They're wheel to wheel. Sato will take it into turn one. Nice start by Dixon. He stays wheel to wheel. Now he'll tuck in to the draft down the back straightaway. Nice start. Packed up further back, but up front, Dixon looking low on Sato as they start to go single file through three and four. It looks like maybe that's Hinchcliffe running high along with Spencer Piggott working the high line out of four. Piggott around the outside there. It's Joseph Newgarden who will come back in on the inside. Piggott tucks in in that black auto geek car, and he's being challenged now to the low side. That's Colton Herta Whoa. making moves very close there. Here comes Piggott inside Newgarden. You're going to see that all night. These guys are getting racy already. Col Colton Herta now got another run. Rossi on the high side. Right on board now with Alexander Rossi. That's Colton Hurd in front of him. Both Still green and white cars. No pressure, no pressure. It's a new livery this weekend for oh, Alexander Rossi. The way nice you can run. tell him apart from Colton Herder. Herder has the red mirrors. Look Terrific at this. Run. Terrific run from Rossi. Let's see if Herder gives him room. That was a great line, keeping it tucked down underneath of the air turbulence of Colton outside. Herter, and he You're clears him nice. That was a clear, perfectly clear. executed pass. You can differentiate Herter from Rossi because Colton Herter has the red mirrors and the red camera on the top of the roll hoop. Now they start to stretch out. Sato, Dixon, Hunter Ray, Bordet. Here is Takuma. And Sato's opened up a pretty impressive gap over Scott Dixon already. Yeah, these two guys are really stretching it out right now. I'm sure that Scott Dixon is content to ride. He's the fuel mileage master, so you're going to burn like at Indy. You're going to burn a little bit more fuel sitting out front. So I'm sure Scott Dixon is OK with this right now. Ryan hunter Ray made a nice move to get up to third in front of Sebastian Bourdais. And now we ride with Rossi again. And He's going to start working on Joseph Newgard now. Two Americans firing it down to turn one. Almost in the grass like Sato last year, and he had to get out of it. He was frustrated with his qualifying, said we were faster than that. We will have a better race car, and we're already seeing that as Newgarden defends. Rossi says, I'll go the high side, and here comes Colton Herder. Right <laughs> he's got a bullet, Rossi, but he's having a hard time getting around. Newgarden because Newgarden's weaving all over the back straight away. And Rossi has to keep checking his mirrors because every time he checks up on a on a bailout of a Newgarden pass, he's got Colton Herta all over the back of him. And then this young American, Zach Veach, also looking pretty racy early on. Veach has got Graham Rahal up ahead. They're trying to tag onto that group with Herta and Rossi and Newgarden. Sato boasts a one second lead over Scott Dixon up front, but this is where the action is right here. 218 on the last lap for Sato. They are already up at qualifying speeds with the heat on the track. Let's talk more Zach Beach with Kevin. Remember last year and he went from 16th to 6th very early on as we see Ed Carpenter on track right now. Now we ride on board with Zach Veach. He said this is the best car I think I've had before, but he told me I'm going to be more patient this year. I got in too much of a hurry last year, and that's what bit me when he brushed the wall. So he's going to be a little bit more methodical, try to stay in the top half of the race and make it go in the second half. Oh, a little wiggle there for Zach Veach. How about Ed Carpenter? We said to keep an eye on him. Where is he? He is down seven spots in 20th. Car 20 in 20th. That's not the plan for a guy who's been victorious here. Meanwhile, Rossi's been able to get around Joseph Newgarden. And here comes Colton Herter lining up for a shot at the points leader. Outside what a brave move. move. That is very difficult right, because the track rolls back. off from a camber standpoint at the exit of two, and Colton Herter keeps his foot in it. Newgarden's going to get overhauled by Rahal. Ray Hall. New livery for Ray Hall right there in the Fleet Coast Care car. Let's see if Graham Ray Hall can do what Alexander Rossi did earlier and get some oh. air. No, he can't. He's got breathing breathing it. Breathing it. Stuck in the dirty air, had to lift. And now Graham's getting challenged outside, on the outside, outside. by Zach Veach through Whoa. three and four. Look at Veach. That was close. That's what happens when you got to back off the throttle. They're wide open around here almost. And when you get checked up, you lose all your momentum. And Veach got a nice run on that. But here comes Erickson. Man, that was close between the left rear of Zach Veach and the right front of Graham Rahal. You couldn't put a Rubik's Cube between those two. A couple of great moves, though, from Colton Herter and Zach Veach early on. Only lap 12 of 248 as we go on board with Santino Ferrucci.
Ferrucci running 14th right now. Takuma Sato leads Scott Dixon by one and a half seconds. But how about this for a move? Zach Beach on the charge. He's up to 11. There's nothing like playoff hockey, and tomorrow night the Cup will be in the building. After winning Game 5, the Blues return home and look to claim their first title in franchise history. It's Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final, live from St. Louis, 8 Eastern on NBC, part of the NBC Sports Championship season, presented by Canada Dry, Ginger Ale and Lemonade. What do you think at home? Can the Bruins come back and get it all square three apiece, go to a Game 7? Wait and see tomorrow night, 8 on NBC. To Kelly Stavis, Kel? Lee Kumo Sato won his second pole position of the season. When I asked him about the advantages of, of that specific to Texas, he said, well, look, it's never a disadvantage, but he really feels like it would give him the opportunity to control the pace of this race. He was also going to enjoy some free air, at least for a time. Um, and he said if there was any disadvantage, it would be a little bit bigger fuel consumption. But he thinks this is going to come down to tire wear, not a fuel mileage race. The team has told him his fuel numbers so far are really good. And now as he reaches that lap traffic, the latest message just to be really careful passing these cars, Jan. Yeah, so one of those that's back in danger of going a lap down would be Ed Carpenter. We saw him dropping back, as Lee, you mentioned, down to 20th spot. The report was that the car has gone too free, in other words, a bit too loose. Right about here, when he rolls it into the corner, the back is not giving him the security, and he can't maintain the momentum right now. We'll have to wait for a pit stop to make an adjustment. Just in front of him is Rosenquist. You've got one of the most experienced guys in the field racing. A guy who's really struggled on ovals so far in his rookie year, Felix Rosenquist. And these two guys desperately trying to stay on the lead lap. We're only 24 laps in, and Sato's already lapped Mateus Leist. He sits right back behind Kanan as we see out the back of Rosenquist to Ed Carpenter. And two cars back is the leader, Takuma Sato. And we'll see how Sato does work in traffic as this battle continues between Spencer Piggott in the black car there, white and green car, Alexander Rossi. And Rossi's been working on Piggott for at least the last five laps. And Colton Herter's done a nice job tucked in behind there. Herter is running ninth. Let's go on board with Rossi. He's mounting a challenge here on Spencer Piggott. Rossi's got a good handle no on car towns you. and traffic. He's running closer to guys than anybody Still in the there. field right now. And he just Still cleared there. Piggott. All clear. All clear. And, that, and he should really drop Piggott quickly now that Rossi has clean air. And he'll look to try to catch up to James Hinchcliffe as Herter's now going to put Piggott in his mirrors, hurt of the inside. Ooh, squeezed a little bit. Piggott came down on him there a little bit. And look who's lining up for a shot. Clear. Here comes the championship Clear. leader. Here comes Newgarden. He, he wants in on this. Third car in shot is Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader, talking about 10th place overall. guys realize that Sato is already at the tail of the field and will start coming through the field because his car right now is an absolute rocket. He's been running laps over 217, 18 miles an hour. The radios are going to get all kinds of chatter and say, hey, you're about to get lapped and they're going to get their hustle on Townsend. There's Sato behind Tony Kanan. He had passed Kanan. I think Kanan passed back. And yes, Kanan's back on the lead lap. So Tony Kanan fighting as hard as he can, trying to hang on, hoping for a yellow probably at this point. Dick, and now Dixon, Dixon close is in Sato's mirrors in that orange and blue PNC car. That's Scott Dixon, last year's winner. Sato's car is a rocket in clean air, but he is struggling in the turbulent air. So Dixon now has caught him, and Sato is not able to move through the field. You can see the pit windows, even though they're open, you do not want to pit under green. If you can hang on for a yellow, that's the time you want to pit. You lose over a lap and a half here pitting under green. Tony Kanaan in his 309th consecutive race, 369th full time, is hanging on as hard as he can to stay on the lead lap. You're watching the DXC 
Technology 600 from Texas Motor Speedway. And there is Takuma Sato, race leader being hunted down by the defending race winner and reigning series champion Scott Dixon. You know, we said yesterday during qualifying, guys, that it feels like this is the best start, or certainly the first eight races of a season for Takuma Sato. We'll get back to that story in just a moment as we see this. Look at that from James Hinchcliffe. You'd think it was a dirt track out there, the way Hinchcliffe hung on with that huge slide at 210 miles an hour. Watch this. He's going to clear Pagino to the high Still side there. and look to cut Still down there. on Mateus Lace, the lap car, and it almost outside, gets away outside. from him. Outside. That was great touch, great Clear. finesse with the hands from Hinchcliffe. That's experience driving. Big aero wash caused the rear end to step out on him. We've got some radio see what he had to say about that. Car's pretty good. Got it rotating really well in the middle. One and two on my own right now. Just working with the tool. Copy that. Sounds good. You're looking really good out there. You're as strong as anybody right now. No, oh, that's good sign for Hinch and the SPM team that he's, he's got the handling in a window. He can use the tools in his car to cure an oversteer, cure an understeer, and sounds like the front end's working good in dirty air. That should bode well for later in the race. Well, look at got this. Some racing going on here. Piggott continuing to slide backwards as Graham Rahal is on the inside. Piggott hangs tough outside. on the outside Clear. there. Pretty soon Piggott's going to be teamed up with his teammate out there. He keeps dropping like this. Piggott down to 12th. Ed Carpenter still sits in 20th, right there in front of Takuma Sato. Sato, white, blue, and Ed Carpenter in that red car. Carpenter trying to stay on the lead lap, hoping for a yellow to come to pit lane, make some changes, and see what they can do to improve the 20 car. The guy he's on now is Power, I think, is the next guy in line in front of Sato. So Power's going to have to start hustling here. Unfortunately for Ed Carpenter and Spencer Piggott, they have lost the most positions in the field since the start of the race. Seven for Carpenter, Piggott now down six. And Ed just trying to hang on in that red number 20 Auto Geek Chevrolet. Right now, Sato is behind Carpenter still, then Rosenquist, Andretti, and Power. And Daly just in front of Power. Santino Ferrucci. Ferrucci is running 14th at the moment in that Clydell Honda for Dale Coin Racing. This is what happened to him just a moment ago. Work in the back of Marcus Erickson, the teammate car to James Hinchcliffe. Big lift. Whoa! Oh, that's turn in loose. That is no fun, but he stays right in it. That thing started to lift off like a hovercraft in the dirty air. And you can see how tiny that rear wing is as the weight shifts forward and that turbulent air just starts to generate some lift. And that is not a good feeling, Kelly. No, I'm sure it's not neither. As a, It's been a little bit scary is what Santino Ferrucci told me coming here to Texas. He says it's crazy. It's just the vertical G's. He said his eyes and his sockets were getting pushed down. He almost felt dizzy getting out of the car. His jaw hurt all from the G-forces. He said this is a completely different animal from Indy a couple weeks ago. And man, uh, he's having fun, but he called this place a little bit intimidating. And he's diminutive in stature. He's not a big, bulky, strong guy. So it's taking its toll. This is a physically challenging and mentally challenging event to do 248 laps at well over 200 miles an hour on these high banks of Texas Motor Speedway. 20 degrees in turns one and two, 24 degrees of banking in turns three and four. It is a stress, it is a strain on all drivers in this DXC Technology 600. It's Sato up front. He has led all 46 laps so far. The shadows growing larger here at Texas Motor Speedway. You ride with James Hinchcliffe in the Arrow Schmidt Peterson Honda. And Hinch is starting to make some ground on Ryan Hunter Ray, talking about fourth here, chasing down third place RHR. It's been a really good weekend for James Hinchcliffe so far. Qualified well and has been racing well. The Day Glow yellow Sealmaster Honda of Sebastian Bourdais in behind. He's running fifth at the moment. And something for this weekend here at Texas Motor Speedway is a split pit lane speed. 60 miles an hour, and then it goes to 90. Right there. And the reason they did that was just for safety, 
so that you're not risking it on the apron, getting up to speed, but they wanted that second stage so that you were safely re-entering the track on the back stretch, not trying to accelerate from 60, but rather 90 miles an hour once you come off the button on the back straightaway so that there wasn't an issue getting down to turn three. I think it's a good decision from IndyCar as we see my early pick here, Paul. Ryan Hunter Ray sitting third. He's kind of caught up to Dixon there. Just lap, ahead. And Pitty. he's getting the call yeah. pitting yeah. on lap 57. Low fuel lights came on right there on the dash, and I'm wondering if he, it bobbled there for a second. Someone here is nowhere in this race, which is really strange. Is Will Power. He's down in 17th. Tell us more, Jan. Well, as you see Ryan Hunter Ray hitting pit lane, we can tell you that Will Power and many others are hoping so much they can get to this pit stop and make changes. So Power right now has gone quite loose. Kelly? And Ryan Hunter Ray now coming into his pit box. He has said that this uh, DHL machine has had a lot of understeer. They're going to give him a turn of front wing. And remember, the first four sets of these Firestone tires must be scuffed. So that's what's going on for Ryan Hunter Ray, who pitted from third. Big burnout leaving the pitch. Got to be careful with that, Townsend, because you can spin the tire on the rim and put it out of balance. So that's a bigger burn burnout than we see from most guys. I'd rather burn out than stall, though, as Marco Andretti comes to his box. He's been struggling all weekend, had an issue in qualifying on his second lap. Full fuel, and he's talking about an issue. I think he's pointing to his front wing, like, where's my front wing change? Guessing that's a little miscommunication. Zach Veach rolling in in the Gainbridge car, making his first stop, getting plenty of mileage. Four Firestones, Speedway fuel. He's been patient as he said he would be here in the early going. Veach is released and rejoined the fight. And you heard that, you heard that radio call from Marco Andretti. Front wing, front wing. Here's Joseph Newgarden. And we're keeping an eye on the right front for Joseph Newgarden. I see it looks like it maybe has a little bit of grading. And very early on, Tim Sindrom is warning him the tire temps are way up on the right sides. Manage those right sides as Spencer Pickett is also in and out. Scott Dixon pits from second, so Takuma Sato remains on track. Dixon, remember, he went 57 plus laps last year with no problem with tire wear. They haven't seen him much this weekend, and he's back out. And here's the lead. Oh. And he into one of his guys, and Sato is into the pit wall, and he hit one of the crewmen. Hit, hit the crewmen hard, just sailed right through his pit box, and I think he was just completely missed his box, Townsend, and thought he was in the next one. Total disaster. He'll get a drive-through penalty once they do get him going, but they can't change the tires until they get that car further away from the wall. Whoa. And under green flag conditions, this is going to put him two, maybe three laps down. What a nightmare. And let's hope that crewman is okay. Yeah, the crewman got hit hard, and he was up against the wall when he got hit. So they're down a couple crew guys here that were out there. Slow stop now. This is going to cost him three or four laps now. Wow. A dramatic turnaround for Takuma Sato. Led the first 60 laps of the race, and then comes in, hits one of his crew guys, and his chances of winning are greatly diminished. Let's here take a look again. at this again. I think he's locked the inside tire, and look at the crew guys here. Boom, hits that guy, just nailed, nailed that guy. Oh, thank goodness that's he's wearing why a helmet. He got cracked on the back of the head here, and Sato just comes in way too hot. I mean, he's... 20 miles an hour too quick, Paul. Yeah, just that wasn't even close. Crew guy's super lucky he didn't end up under that back wheel or into the back wing there. He flipped over the wing, but it looks like he might be okay. He's up and moving around, surprisingly, but the helmets that is mandatory here is awesome. I'll tell you what, what else is great is the deflector okay, in front him. of the left, or in front of the rear tire. That's such an improvement over Two years past. It now. keeps you from getting get sucked into that rear tire on pit lane. As you hear Sato, two laps down now, sits behind Ryan Hunter Ray. And guess what, folks? This is 
the leader. Ryan Hunter Ray beat Scott Dixon in that sequence on pit lane. Stop and go. Drive Lots through penalty for Sato. That's going to cost him another lap, lap and a half. Stop and go. Stop, Stop and, and go. go. So that's even it. worse. So revised order, Ryan Hunter Ray, Scott Dixon, James Hinchcliffe, Alexander Rossi, Simon Pagano. How quickly Takuma Sato's chances of victory changed and ended. So here comes Sato. To see Sato there now serving his penalty as there's a stop and go penalty. Um, as for that crew member that was hit, his name is Chris Welch. He's the inside uh, front tire changer. He seemed to just kind of shake it off, but he does have an ice pack now on his right wrist. The AMR safety team, of course, was here and immediately discussed, uh, looked him over. He also has the back of his fire suit has been ripped wide open. Uh, you can get a glimpse of them there. And also, the signboard's been put back here. I don't know if you guys saw the pole for the signboard, but it is just mangled. You can see it there on the replay. Um, and obviously, the crew there from Ryan Hunter Ray's team, that DHL crew, also very concerned, came over to it. That was one of them. He was one of my crew guys at Dry and Ryan Bowl. He goes by Cuz, and he is a tough dude. He is. He was on for several of my teams as well. And Cus, Cus is going to have a big old contusion at a minimum on his right thigh because he got absolutely checked up. I mean, it was a, it was like a football block taking out the legs there on Cus. It's good to see him standing and, and ready to get back into battle here as Ryan Hunter Ray leads Dixon by about half a second. James Hinchcliffe, Alexander Rossi in the mix. This is the fight for third. Hinchcliffe is there at the moment. And Rossi, who's made up seven positions since the start, and his words rang true. He said, we've got a better car than we showed in qualifying. We'll be okay in the race. And Rossi's proving that now. On board with Hinch. And for some of these drivers, like Graham Rahal, they made it all the way to lap 63. That will allow them to make it on just two more stops. For drivers like Hunter Ray and Dixon, they're going to be light on fuel to make it on two more spots, stops. So I think Graham Rahal did a great job in getting the mileage on that first stint. James Hinchcliffe, as we ride on board with Alexander Rossi, is making some moves as he tries to work his way around. Felix Rosenquist right now to add another lap down for Rosenquist. Hinch came in with a really good car. And remember, he was good last year, but he said the car is better. It's a big weekend, too, because they've got a chance for a result coming off the first podium for the team at the last weekend at Detroit for his teammate Marcus Erickson. Remember before the season when Sam Schmidt said, with Arrow now as a title sponsor, we have the funding. We expect to compete for championships. Sam Schmidt likely expects more than just one podium so far. is the eighth in the championship. So he's got a chance at leaping a few positions here tonight. And with all the drama with Sato, this was the pass. That is Hunter Ray making a move on Dixon. Dixon was fresh out of the pits on the back straight, getting up to speed. Hunter Ray with a quicker stop and a quicker in and out lap flew on by. Hunter Ray came in three laps before Scott Dixon. Leads this race. This is one of the tracks that RHR has yet to see victory at. Maybe it be, can be tonight under the lights here in Texas. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by DXC Technology, a global IT services leader that's helping clients thrive on change. Fleet Cost and Care. Unleash the full potential of your fleet with Fleet Cost and Care software and by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar Series. Back here in Texas, Ryan Hunter Ray in the DHL Honda for Andretti Autosport leads the way. Lovely to have you with us, Lee Diffie, 
Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, the whole gang here at Texas Motor Speedway. Now, while we're in the break, you should have seen Colton Herter, lead rookie in this race and the youngest to ever win a race in IndyCar Series history. He did it here in Texas earlier in the year at Circuit of the Americas. Check this out. He was making moves right here, Townsend, on an Indy 500 champion. And he was, I thought he was going to crash because oh, he got man. loose on entry and then was right on the back wing of Pagano coming off the corner Watch here. his hands. Watch those white gloves from Colton Herta. Makes the move and then just stuffs it in here and almost gets into the side of Pagano and just fearless. 19-year-old, goodbye. I don't care if you've got an Indy 500 winner's ring. I'm going after some Texas revolvers tonight. That was that was for the top five, Kevin. And Colton heard it doesn't sound like other rookies when you ask him about his first experience at Texas. He said, this is fun. I'm comfortable. It's cool. Also, big news from the business department. There have been some conversations that they might be having some financial difficulties, and they were a little bit in peril moving on. But George Steinbrenner IV, Mike Harding have secured guests Green Energy Sustainable Solutions and Capstone Turbine Corp for a multi-million dollar deal that puts them in safe ground for at least the rest of the season. So fantastic news for that team. And Guess and Capstone are also uh, on Alexander Rossi's car. That's why they're both those cars look very similar in their design for tonight's race. There goes Connor Daly, by the way, in the Carlin Chevrolet, the Gallagher car. Uh, we need to talk more about the 22, though, with Jan. Yes, we do. We saw that Colton Herta obviously put that move on the 22 for Simon Pagno. And I just checked with the team. They did not make any changes to the first stop because Simon said the car has been pretty well balanced. But he said, now in hindsight, said Kyle Moyer, I wish we would have put a little bit of front wing into it because he could see, obviously, in that battle that he had with Colton Herta, a little more front grip wanted for Simon Pagno. Of course, they can do that on their next stop. I was telling you about Connor Daly and the Gallagher machine, bright blue there at the front. Now, Connor has this opportunity here tonight after driving for Andretti Autosport at the Indy 500. He's been called in to race this race tonight. Still waiting on details about the future because Max Chilton, the regular driver of the 59, he is no longer going to drive the ovals in the championship. Here's a move on power by Alexander Rossi. And man, it just looks like a big struggle for Team Penske oh. tonight. Power is about to go down a position to Andretti. They're both a lap down, but they will power is a two time winner here. And he's really struggling to just hang on to the tail of well, he's a lap down. He's struggling to hang on to the mid pack while being a lap down. So long night ahead for Will Power. Yeah, Pagano so far looking the best out of the Penske crew. And that's how it was at the last big super speedway at Indianapolis. So it's a struggle right now for Will Power. He had blistering on the back tires in a loose condition. And it looks like it hasn't improved much. Pagano 6, Newgarden 7th for Team Penske, but they just haven't seemed to challenge much in traffic, just trying to kind of hang in there. And everything can change, though, Paul, as the sun drops. Track temperature now down to 102. It was 125 degrees at the start of this race. And we've got an update more on Carlin, and that is Charlie Kimball. Charlie was running well. He was knocking on the door of the top 10. Unfortunately, that car has been taken behind the wall. So problems for Charlie Kimball's Carlin car. Here it is. Charlie's just climbed from the car. And we're hearing it's a right rear wheel bearing was the problem first was he thought the, the right rear was going down then he thought it was brake temperatures the latest i'm hearing is uh, right rear wheel bearing they may try to fix it but as you said and as you can see charlie's out of the car the fiesta chevrolet was having a good run to that point charlie is another one of the drivers not doing a full-time uh season in 2019. Here's first place at the moment, Ryan Hunter Ray, but these two guys, first and second, being Ryan Hunter Ray and Scott Dixon, are three laps apart on their fuel strategy. So they, we'll see how that plays out they in the are. picture. And I think Hunter Ray's in a little bit of trouble on mileage because he only went 57 laps. Dixon pitted on lap 60. And I think Dixon's happy to run second right now and force Ryan to burn more fuel and put himself deeper in potentially a fuel hole if, in fact, they had to pit for gas on 57. Maybe it was just a handling requirement to go to new tires, but Hunter Ray is going to need to find some mileage to make this thing on two more stops. 
Yeah, Dixon's been holding about this gap to the leader. The leader was Sato before that pit incident, and he's just been holding to that about a second to lap sitting in the draft. So his car obviously is working well up in the draft and not losing any ground. Guys, broaching 100 laps of this 248 lapper, are you, are you as shocked as I am to see it go green the whole way so far? I am, because it was dicey on the start, no yellows. Biggest issue so far has been that crash on pit lane with Takuma Sato, but hang on to your hats Texas style because it's getting dark, temperatures are dropping, and everybody gets racing when that happens. Captain America leads the way for Andretti Autosport. Will it stay that way as we're knocking on lap number 100 here at Texas Motor Speedway? At the end of the month, Sunday, June 30th, NASCAR returns to the networks of NBC. Get ready to gas it up as the sport's top drivers race to the championship. Really pleased to say NASCAR is back on NBC and NBCSN starting June 30th. So, top two in the race, Ryan Hunter race, got Dixon, nothing has changed there. 12 cars are on the lead lap. The final car on the lead lap is Santino Ferrucci, the rookie, who's fighting with fellow rookie Marcus Ericsson. Meanwhile, check this out. Colton Herter is on the move. That's Rossi. And Alexander Rossi on yeah. James Hinchcliffe. Yeah, that's Rossi has now caught Hinchcliffe, and I think he's going to get him right here. Oh, he's got a nice run. run on the outside. Has to back it off and set that up again. There's so much indecision in the trioval because you don't know if the car in front is going to stay low or fade They're high, hot. and I'm sure Hinchcliffe is exercising every bit of that question that indecision that'll come from the trailing car rossi just didn't know which here way he, he was going to go here he comes again yeah Same but here move. comes the trioval one back last time we saw these two guys Looking together outside. this close on track outside. was last weekend in detroit race two and they ended up in the wall rossi was able to gas it up and escape hinchcliffe was stuck to joseph yeah, newgarden laps, so he stopped just here ahead comes of colton herda these two have been battling each other all night long so far they get separated a bit in traffic but colton now has chased down the back of rossi well and colton has demonstrated that he's sort of a, a rossi mini me in terms of that killer instinct has a win already this season and colton herda has demonstrated that he's just not intimidated anywhere we go on the indycar schedule while we enjoy this battle of three, let's play some radio for you. Recent radio from James Hinchcliffe. Cars really starting to turn itself in. Clean air. Oh. Yeah, copy that, bud. Just keep working with it. Man, you've got a rocket ship. This thing's turning into a three-stop race. There you heard it. Three-stop race. You've got to get, though, to about lap 124, 125 to Look make that work. Right and here there. comes the 19-year-old. Colton Herta looking to the high side. He has demonstrated time and again tonight that he's not afraid to go low, go high, just go for it. Incredible. Here Whoa. we go. Outside move. That is double. a bold move. As loose as people have been entering turn one in traffic, Colton Herta. Oh, oh you can see it wiggle there. It's loose again, coming off the corner. <laughs> I love it. Remember his set words. This up, set this up again and get a run down the front straightaway. We Here know, he comes. Here he we comes. We know that Hinchcliffe's going to hold the inside. Watch this One move. Send it. Outside. Send it in there, 88. Outside. And he has. Outside. Oh, Still it's there. no grip up Still high, there. but there is for Colton Herta. That was awesome. Remarkable. Now Rossi, Rossi will get a run right here. He Rossi Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. That was fifth to third in a couple laps. How much does Hinchcliffe try to defend now? He's already lost the position to Herta. Oh, look, they're chasing him back down, though. Look at this. Rossi had to ease there, yeah, just come Rossi, back out of it. Rossi's loose on entry. He's really got to pedal but, out of it. But Hinchcliffe sent it in there and then checked up, and I think Rossi will have a run through three and four if he can keep the throttle down here. Looking for air to the low side. Kelly? And you can see there the leader, Ryan Hunter Ray, has been called to pit road after leading 50 laps in this race. The team asked him if he wanted any more front wing. Remember, they made one full turn last time. Ryan said not just yet. So he's got the Firestone tires, Speedway fuel, and he's off. And unfortunately for Hunter Ray, Hunter Ray and Jan, you might chime in here on strategy, but I think that commits Hunter Ray to a four-stop race. He'll need to stop two more times to make it to the end. Not good news 
for the 28 car. Yes, and remember, that'll be a similar strategy to what we saw at the Indianapolis 500 when you lead, and Paul mentioned this earlier, you burn much more fuel. So yes, this would commit him to two more stops, unless, of course, there was a lot more caution that was coming in the future. But when you lead, you lose more fuel, and there's only a few people that I see on the board right now that are candidates for three stoppers. Ha, look at Zach Veach coming in hot. Showed you the speed difference very graphically, didn't it? By the way, as we run lap 117, for the first 100 laps, fellas, are an average speed of 209 miles an hour, 229 passes in those first 100 laps. We're on our way to a, a race record if this thing stays green. Kevin Lee, Zach Veach coming to you. And I think we are going to see differing strategies. So Zach Veach is not getting enough fuel mileage right now without some yellows. Yellows can change things to be able to do this in three stops. But some are, and all it will take is a little bit of yellow to put that in play. And the tires seem to be lasting. The Firestones are lasting a bit longer than people expected. That's why the three-stop strategy is coming in play. As Will Power is in now, Jan. Yes, and Will Power is off strategy because he had a severely blistered, and they add quite a bit of front wing now for Will Power, but on his first stint, he had a loose car, which gave him lots of blisters, and that's how you can tell the balance of a car. When they roll off and they have blisters, that particular tire looks A-OK. -okay. So Scott Dixon in the PNC Bank Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing is the leader. Colton Herter is second. He's been certainly been Mr. Excitement tonight. There is Hinchcliffe just easing on the inside of Zach Veach, who's working his way back up to speed. We'll and see I, what the difference is here, Townsend, on fresh tires versus old tires as Kelly. And Graham Rahal now comes to pit road. They made half a turn of front wing adjustment. Last time you see another adjustment there for Graham Ray Rahal, who's been pretty quiet on the radio and seemingly happy with his car. A little surprised that Rahal had to pit there. He went 63 laps on the first stint, and that's only 57 on the second. So based on the fact that the fuel plug was short, I'm going to say that he needed tires with the handling of his car. So now he has to maybe stretch it to make it on one more stop. But the guys that are still on track, Dixon, Herta, Hinchcliffe, Rossi, Pagino, they're all looking good as Colton Herta comes to pit lane. So Herta is in, Dixon stays out. Rossi's in. How far can Dixon stretch it? Let's send it down to Kevin. And we've got a whole bunch of takers here, along with Herta and Rossi. Joseph Newgarden is also coming in. Those two almost identical cars. The red mirrors, that's Herta coming in first. Rossi moves in right in front of him. Firestones, Speedway Fuel. There's Joseph Newgarden sliding around Rossi up in the front. So a race on pit road. And the rookie, Colton Herta, who has raced his way up to second, out first, and Rossi is right in front of him. And Simon Pagano is going to beat his teammate Newgarden now. That's impressive that that young Harding Steinbrenner team beats Alexander Rossi on pit lane. I mean, they came in with Herta leading, but it's nice to see them match Rossi's team on pit yeah. lane in terms of execution. As those drivers blend back up, that's Ed Carpenter, a lap down, coming at speed. So now we wait for Hinchcliffe. Scott Dixon slides into his stall. It was interesting asking him, I said, do you need to stay out of the lead to save fuel? And he said, no, it's really not like Indy here. It's okay if you lead in this case. You're not going to really burn that much more fuel. And But that time, I think he was thinking more about a four-stop strategy. Maybe it's a little bit different if you're trying to get the mileage to do it on three. And he's in that window. He's got a chance to do it. Probably could use a little bit of help. Oh, yeah, he went longer on that second stint than he did on the first, some three laps longer. Yeah, no changes on the car either, which is a really good sign. A lot of guys making wing changes up Whoa. and down as Sato now comes to the pit lane. He's multiple laps down now with that penalty, drive-through stop penalty that he had. But Dixon's car is handling really well. As he gets back up to speed, lights starting to take effect here at Texas Motor Speedway. And we have still, as we now cross over the halfway mark of this race, no yellow flags. Hunter Ray ends up in the lead again. So in that battle with Hinchcliffe, Herta, and Rossi, Hinchcliffe stays in third. I think got around Colton Herta in that sequence because Herta was third, right? Getting, Hinchcliffe yes, was fourth. Townsend, so. Getting to the fresh tires is, 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 is an advantage because look at the gap now. Hunter Ray has a three and a half second gap. And when they were running together, it was only literally a half a second. But the problem is, Paul, that Hunter Ray 
pitted so a lot earlier, so fuel-wise, he's going to have to make two more stops to make it, where Scott Dixon, Hinchcliffe, and Herta, I think, can just make it on one more. We'll have to hear some radio, maybe, from Hunter Ray. As Colton Herta's working Hinchcliffe, those guys are battling go. really close. Let's go back and see if we can pick up this radio to see how Hunter Ray's doing on strategy. We have trouble on fuel. We made our choice. This is what we got. We're just going hard to the end of the race. Some of these guys are going to try and three-stop it, but we're going for it. They don't sound totally confident. A bit of sort of, we've made our bed. we yeah. got to stick with it. So it's all about going full chat. Go for it. You have to find a gap to make up that difference. And that gives us quite the story at the front of the race. Hunter Ray on a four-stopper, Dixon on a three-stopper. Which one's going to work out? You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by DXC Technology, a global IT services leader that's helping clients thrive on change. And as the entitlement sponsor of this year's Texas race, DXC Technology gave fans a glimpse into the digital fan experience of the future all weekend long at the DXC Digital Suite. The on-premises demo facility featured a virtual speedway and virtual pit stop, which let fans join a virtual pit crew to perform a tire change using augmented reality, giving them a view of IndyCar racing they've never seen before. Pretty cool stuff from DXC Technology, and after 135 laps, there is a caution. It's because of the Gainbridge Honda and Zach Veach in a spectacular moment. He went spinning down the back straight, and he, this is how it happened. We was, haven't seen He was this. riding a wild bull right here. Watch this. He hit the wall, <laughs> and then the tow link breaks, and he's chasing that thing all over the place oh, like it's a... Oh, man. <laughs> Hang on, son. Eight seconds. Look at that. He's all the way down in turn three, and he hasn't stopped driving it. it hasn't right rear riding. toe link's broken. Left rear's flat now. Right rear's flat. Watch this. He didn't lift either. He tries to hold it wide open down the back straight. Hang on to her. Hang on to that bull. Wow. He just got up behind Piggott there. Got loose. It and got loose. Out big, and then it just broke the toe link. I love the fact that he didn't lift either for the first couple of seconds. He thought he was going to drive in. that <laughs> thing right back by. What a wild ride for Zach Veach. Oh, man, that's pretty much the end of his race, and it definitely is there out of the car, and he's thinking to himself, man. He needed to jump out of that and throw his cowboy hat. But this is what <laughs> happens in Texas, man. I tell you, every year, right when it gets dark, the lights come out and the werewolf mode goes full steam. All right, cars on pit road during this caution. As you can imagine, Kev's there. This is going to make things more fun. One, I think it's less of a fuel mileage race. It's going to be easy to make it for those that are trying to do it on three. And we're going to have alternate strategies, including Joseph Newgard to see up in the front, who comes in. Will Power, Takuma Sato, who's laps down, also out. And Marcus Erickson among those, and Sebastian Bourdais that have taken the opportunity to get fresh Firestones and or just hop off here. And this is the reason for this is there's only 11 cars left on the lead lap. So smart decision, take fresh tires. They're still going to have to pit one more time, but this yellow really helps Ryan Hunter Ray, who needed caution to potentially make it on one more stop. He's going to need a lot of caution, but so far you've got three laps of caution. He needs about 14 laps, I well, think. Yellows breed yellows, because now that Yeah, we got 110 laps to go, so a lot of racing still left. Another yellow makes this whole thing easy. Now that the lights are on, oh, they're going to the be sweeping right now too. Oh, that's track good temp news. is down. Good These news. guys are going to get super racy, and we're going to see guys start banging wheels. Good news for Hunter Ray is they just called for the track sweepers, so that will extend this yellow and give Ryan a chance to match his competitors on mileage and make it, Kelly. 
Yeah, and he was really anxious wanting to know when this caution came out if it was going to help his cause or hurt it. And as you just heard on the radio, they've obviously switched from what was going to be a four-stop strategy into a three-stop. They said it's going to be a fuel mileage race now. And Ryan said, well, it's a lot easier to save fuel in traffic here than it is up front. But obviously, they don't want to give up the lead to top him off now. But it is going to come down to fuel here at the front of this field. That was Paul Ziggy Harkis you saw there. He Long might time consider. Man, man. Hunter Ray should consider getting him a draft in that pace car. We've seen that in the past because that can help your yellow mileage. Clutch and coast, six gear. Speedway lap leaders shows us who has led the most laps in tonight's race thus far. And it's Captain America, Ryan Hunter Ray. 66 laps led over its Kumasato 60. And Taku led those 60 laps, the first 60 of the race until that misfortune in his pit stop. Scott Dixon has led 10, and Graham Rahal has led three. So four different leaders tonight, but this is the man who has led the most. In search of his first win this season, and first ever win at Texas Motor Speedway. His teammate at Andretti Autosport just had the most spectacular spin at about 190 Andrew, miles Andrew. an hour. Zach Beach out of this race. And welcome back to the DXC Technology 600. We're still under caution here. And just a quick update on that crew member we saw get hit by Takuma Sato here on pit road, Chris Welch. He has been actually taken back to the medical center uh, where we're told they want to further evaluate him. So Eric Wainscott has been called to fill in duty there and we'll wait for a further update on Chris Welch. Back to green, Ryan Hunter Ray is under pressure from Scott Dixon. Here comes Alexander Rossi as well. Good restart. Who's side by side then? James Hinchcliffe is in the mix. Nice move from Hinch going to the outside of Pagano in the white and black car. Excuse me, I think that's Graham Rahal in the white and black car. Pagano just behind Rahal, and they're two wide, thinking about three wide further back. Newgarden went around the outside on the high line. Here comes Dixon. Dixon side by side with Hunter Ryan almost got the lead. Dixon has to check up and Alexander Rossi there in third might have a run down the back stretch. Rossi's been really good through three and four. When you check up that hard, it leaves you vulnerable. You kill all your momentum and here comes Rossi. He's got a wing down on the clear clear air. Dixon. And he's got a nice run down the front straightaway. Dixon left Rossi some air to the low side. That helped him get a run. He's going to probably just back off here and try it again next lap. I haven't seen Rossi been able to send it into the corner on the outside like we saw that Colton Herta did on Hinchcliffe. He's yet to been able Colton, to do that. Here comes Herta to the high side. Herta loving this Texas track. Told Kevin that it was fun. Does the crossover behind the car in front of him. He started on the high side and crossed over. Here we go. Here we go. The teenager is not on afraid right to right have a go. Back. Oh man, and he's getting plenty Little of wiggles there on the side. entry to one. He's the only guy that's been able to run up a little bit up on the groove. Everybody's going right to the white line, and he's got it up the track just a little bit. I think for these three cars, Dixon, Rossi, and Herta, they're perfectly content to let Ryan Hunter Ray try to ride off in the distance and burn fuel because Ryan Hunter Ray still needs two more stops, I think, to make it. Colton with a run, one back. Keep your eye on this car Hope here. Alexander Rossi had. Normally he does the big moves on people and he saw Colton Herter put a move that he would typically do on people on him. We'll see if Herter can do it again as Rossi now gets closer to Dixon. You'll Rossi's see. really strong at three and four, but he's not that good on the entry to one. So that's where he's got to be able to figure out how can I get down on, on the inside of Dixon, but it, Dixon won't give up the inside line. But there's still a hundred laps to go. So Rossi has a lot of time, he but he might again. make it happen now. Really good off three and four. Dixon protects the inside and Rossi's just not able to send it into the corner on the outside. He backs way off. Again. You'll see lap 150 complete in your upper left hand corner of the screen. They'll go to about lap 186, 185 as their last stop. That'll be for Dixon, Rossi, and Herta, Hunter Ray in a different situation. Dixon with a run. I don't know now if Hunter Ray wants to sit out front. He's got to get better fuel mileage. This is a lot like Pagano at Indy. He's got to get fuel mileage if he's going to win this race. And to do that, he's got to get out of the lead. 
All right, it's time for Honda to take us through the field, and Kelly Stavis kicks us off. Kelly? And we'll start with Ryan Hunter Ray there at the head of the field, and Paul Tracy just said it. It is about hitting a fuel number now for Ryan Hunter Ray, and he sounds a little bit frustrated over the radio moments ago, the team telling him that they're going to need another caution, I think, to make this fuel strategy work. And this is the time of the season where he wants to start making some noise. He said he has to come away from this race with a top three, but ideally, of course, a win to keep their championship hopes alive, Kevin. Well, Kevin, we talk fuel saving. We know Scott Dixon, who's got to run right here on Ryan Hunter Ray, and is going to pop to the outside looking for the lead. He'll settle back in right behind. Nobody's better at saving fuel than Dixon, and nobody in the current crop is better on ovals. His 21 oval wins is eighth most all time and the most since the early 90s since guys like AJ and Mario retired now right behind him is one of the young crop of Oval Meisters this is Alexander Rossi he said I'm going to be patient I only want to be up to about sixth or eighth by the time we hit the first stop and I want to be in the top three or four when we get to the second half of the race and I studied what Scott Dixon did last year we've suited the car to fit well when it gets dark which it has now so watch for Rossi and then an almost identical car right behind him in Colton Herta, same sponsor for the weekend, pseudo teammates. They have a partnership with Andretti Autosport, the Harding Steinbrenner Racing. Driver is being challenged right now by James Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe is going around for fourth position, and Hinchcliffe has been consistently told he's got the fastest car on track, and I'm not sure they're saving anymore. I think I'm hearing some conversation. They might be aborting trying to do it on one more stop and going after it now. Kelly, let's slide back to sixth and Graham Rahal. Graham Rahal told me he was really happy with his race car. He said he felt like he got a good, pretty good read and practice on how it would be in traffic. And indeed, he seems like he's been happy on the radio so far, where he thought his biggest strength would be tires. He said they ran 51 laps on a set of tires in practice, and they came out looking perfect. So he said if it comes down to those tires, we could be in good position, y'all. Yes, and that's the case for Simon Pagno as well, because he pitted on lap 125. That put him nice in the window for those who decided early on to try a strategy that not many people thought could take place, and that's the three-stopper. Initially, early in the race, he had some understeer. The front wasn't really giving him the kind of grip level he wanted. They've been able to make those changes during the pit stops. So Kevin, as you see his teammate, Newgarden behind, Pagno right now running steady. And Jan Joseph Newgarden is first in a different strategy. He came in under that caution, so he pitted, for example, 16 laps later than Simon Pagano. He has fresher firestones. He has plenty of fuel to burn if some of these in front cannot get it done or have to save big trying to do it on one more stop. Joseph Newgarden might be in position to win this race. Kelly. Fantino Ferrucci, the rookie, still riding the high of winning the Rookie of the Year honors at the Indy 500 after finishing seventh. That was his career best. He told me his goal for the season was to finish every single race lap. Well, right now he is just two laps shy of doing that this season. He leads the entire field in laps completed, an accomplishment so far for this rookie, Jan. Yeah, and talk about rookies, Marcus Harrison, obviously, we've talked to him in the pre-race show that he did his rookie test here, and it really was an eye-opener for him, but hey, look as a rookie, along with Ferrucci, staying on the lead lap. That's what you need to do. He did have some understeer early in the race. He communicated that to the team. He stopped on lap 123, also in a good window as far as what you want for fuel strategy. Now behind him, Sebastian Bourdais, who again wasn't super confident with his race setup going in. He just opened everybody's eyes in qualifying, pulling a 220.4 mile per hour on one single lap, and then had to back off a little on lap two. They've been working on this car, but Sebastian was on the radio wanting to know on a couple of those pit stops, he felt they lost a little track position, need to be a little sharper on pit road. That was a Honda through the field, thanks to Jan Beekers, Kelly Stavis, and Kevin Lee. For that update, lap 161 of 248, 88 laps to go here in Texas. Just the one caution, Ryan Hunter Ray, here he is in the DHL Honda. He has led the most laps and continues to. Brought to you by Illumination, the new film, The Secret Life of Pets 2. From the creators of Despicable Me, discover the secret life of Pets 2, now playing in a theatre near you. How about you, PT? You're going to roll down to your local theatre in Scottsdale to check that out? Absolutely. <laughs> As we welcome you back, 
Uh, Scott Dixon, now the leader, took the lead from Ryan Hunter-Ray with 85 laps to go. He's the best on fuel. He's a three-time and defending race winner here. Could join Elio Castro-Neves as the only four-time winner. We'll see. Elio drove the Honda two-seater earlier before the race. It's not. It's far from done yet, the though. The problem that Hunter Ray has is he needs to be a little bit closer to Dixon to, to use that draft to help him save fuel. He's getting closer now, but I think Dixon was reluctant to take the lead. I think Hunter Ray really gave it up because he has to save fuel. I think what Hunter Ray's doing is just kind of backing up to Colton Herta, driving his mirror, sorry, to Rossi, and driving his mirrors Mama, and watching that gap and just number. making sure Rossi gets close enough but not close enough to pass, and he's lifting in the process and saving fuel that way. So not worried so much about drafting, but just backing up to Rossi, driving as slow just as he can as Ryan number. Hunter Ray. And there you hear Hunter Ray and Ray Goslin on his pit stand working on the number, but I think Hunter Ray is going to have to pit maybe around lap 180 and then hope for some yellow to make it on that last stop. And the team have just told Ryan Hunter Ray that if Rossi gets a good run on him to let him go by and attack Dixon because he does have a better fuel number. It sounds like Ryan Hunter Ray, and now you see Rossi making the move around the outside and Hunter Ray not putting up much of a fight. He said he's having trouble hitting his fuel numbers even in traffic, but they're hoping he can at least get one lap back for him. Now five back. This no double run, draft back. is now really going to help him, but he's got to stay closer, Towns, and he's got to get right up on the back of those cars and basically half throttle it all the way around the track. He's going to get passed by. It, you can have gray five to make a pass. This is a phenomenal run from James Hinchcliffe. This is the best run he's had this year, and it's good to see this uh, Arrow Schmidt Peterson team being in the spotlight two weekends in a row with Marcus Erickson last weekend. Hinch was in the mix, I have to say last weekend as well but this is a really Whoa, strong go. run look at this for the lead alexander the rossi outside. will he send it and he there. does <laughs> still there all clear all clear alexander rossi with the bold move to the outside he wants to feel clean air this is his first time tonight and let's not forget where alexander started outside the top 10 in 11. here comes hinchcliffe on ryan hunter ray Pops out. Is he close enough? I think no. Hunter Ray's going to make it hard for him. I think Hunter Ray's feeling like I've given up enough positions. It's time to hold on here, save as much gas as I can. And if Hunter Ray can get into, you know, pit on lap 182, 183, he might have a chance to make it. He's got to be as close to the back of Dixon's car as Hinchcliffe is to him. If he's going to maximize the fuel, you lose the draft a little bit back there. You're getting some, but look at Dixon comes back by Ross. He gives up the lead. All these guys are going to try to hang out here as long as they can before making that last stop in case a yellow comes out. They don't want to be in that danger zone of having to pit under green, going a lap down and having somebody get lucky on a yellow flag. Let's see what Hitchcliffe can do this time around. Here comes, no, not close enough. So in and out laps. If it stays green, are going to be a big deal here. We had a piece in the pre-race show about the rookies in the NTT IndyCar Series for 2019. What an amazing job they have done. Colton Herter in fifth, Santino Ferrucci in ninth, and Marcus Erickson in tenth, all on the lead lap. Derek, da uh, Connor Daly up to 12th, only a lap down. He was really struggling with that call car all weekend as Hunter Ray comes to the pits. Wow, well short of where he needs to be. Hunter Ray comes to pit lane on lap 179. Look at this, Rossi. Still there, nothing behind the you. Lead, but decided nothing just behind. to back out as Ryan Hunter Ray has made the Andretti Autosport box. Kelly's there. And you can really hear the frustration in Ryan's voice over the radio uh, over this strategy that has essentially gone awry they did tell him to stay ahead of james hitchcliffe there at the end and they basically said look we've made our bed we got to lie in it just focus on the task at hand now half a turn of front wing by the way for ryan hunter ray he has to have a yellow come out there's got to be a crash if this is going to play out for him he's got to stick with it here he's got to hustle right here there's still hope a lot of time left for like you said paul a long yellow that would help him but he's about five laps short there of where he needed to be 
relative to the competition. We'll have to wait now to see when does Dixon, Rossi, Hinchcliffe, Herta, when do they come to pit lane because that's going to be the battle. Top six, top five cars on track are all powered by Honda. Lead Chevrolet is Simon Pagano in sixth. His Penske teammate Joseph Newgarden is seventh. And Will Power outside the top ten in 13th. It has been a frustrating weekend in Texas for the two-time winner. And here Rossi left off. He's content to sit here and make the fuel mileage they need to get. So what's your number, Townsend? I, I think about 186, uh, 187. So we're really close to that final pit stop for these cars. What will happen, though, is New Garden, Erickson, and Bourdais will all cycle to the front, but they will also have to make a stop, but it'll come much later. Well, I think as we see the Firestone telemetry giving us some important numbers, what did we saw? We saw Dixon go 63 laps on the second stint. Yep. And we saw, was it Graham Rahal? Graham Rahal did 63, yep. but on that the on stint. the first stint, but that included yellow pace laps. So Graham yep. Rahal with great mileage early on. Here comes Rossi, big run. And I think he's just happy to save the gas right now. He knows this is going to come down to a Texas shootout at the end. What's going to happen is these guys are going to come out on fresh tires, and they're going to be racing guys that are trying to make it to the end like Newgarden, and they're going to be on used tires and trying to fight their position. So the crossover here is going to be really interesting. New tires to old tires. Rossi for the lead. Still there, all clear, all clear. Good, clean move. Now we're in the window. Now these guys can comfortably pit and make it on one more stop, but I think they're going to hang on. They don't want to be caught out by a yellow. Who goes first? Who makes that decision? 63 laps to go. Here comes Scott pit, Dixon. Pit, pit. Now make it 62. The pit, call pit. is pit, pit, pit. Rossi wanted to be in the lead when they came to pitch. You've got a clear road in. You're not following anybody. You can, you know, and Dixon stays out. I'm surprised he didn't come with him, Townsend. Well, again, doesn't want to live in that danger zone of a yellow. Rossi on pit lane. Here's Ferrucci making a change from 10th. <laughs> Who's come with Alexander Rossi here? Is that Pagano? Pagano, right? Looks like Pagano. Pagano right there in the mix. Oh, that's Graham. Pagano getting his service. Also, he's taking on, again, these are scrub Firestone tires, and they give him a full turn of front wing, and he is good to go to the end. They did not need all the fuel because he was one of those that elected to pit under caution earlier. Great stop for Alexander Rossi, who easily beats Pagano out. He had pitted two laps earlier than Dixon the last time, so he is right on the brink of being able to make it the rest of the way as it stays green. There goes Ryan hunter Ray in front of Rossi. Even though Ryan had to pit earlier on fuel, they were battling on the track, so... Here's Colton Herta. We'll have to see where he blends out relative to Rossi. Herta has been spectacular tonight with some really decisive passing moves. Here's James Hinchcliffe, Kevin. And we wondered if he had maybe turned up the wick a little bit and aborted the three-stop strategy. He had not. He's still in the window to be able to get it done. Real quick stop for the five Aero SPM team. Hinchcliffe still has a chance to win this race. Race leader Scott Dixon on pit road for the final time. Watch the Ganassi crew go to work. Should be the final stop. Keep in mind, though, if there is a yellow with uh, less than a dozen cars on the lead lap, they'll come in for fresh fire stones one more time. Great stop by the Ganassi team. Dixon back out. Now we can watch the blend with the other leaders coming back up on track. Big week ahead for Scott as he heads off to France tomorrow to race in the 24 hours of Le Mans. So too does Sebastian Bourdais. He goes home to his birth city to do it again to try and win in the Ford Chip Ganassi squad. Townsend, I really got, I really feel that fresh tires are gonna be king at the end, especially if there's a late yellow. I think you're gonna wanna have brand new tires on, on any type of late yellow. Just depends on when it happens and what your track position is. I think a lot of guys would have a hard time pitting from the lead. No yellows 
in the last stint here for Joseph Newgarden. So they're in a sweet spot to maybe benefit from a yellow if it comes out on that alternate strategy. Tell you, he's running two 17s, and those leaders, when they were, Dixon, they were running like 210, 211s, and Newgarden right now flying last lap 216.8. Chevrolet driver update shows you where they are, and we've seen this before, haven't we? Alexander Rossi and Scott Dixon going at it at high speed, 210, 215. Big speed here at Texas Motor Speedway, and let's not discount the mayor of Hinchtown. James Hinchcliffe has been in the mix ever since the drop of the green. First lap around on those fresh tires for Scott Dixon is a 216.3. Hinchcliffe hard in the limiter there. Behind Rossi, trying to figure out how to get a run. 50 laps to go. Everybody's starting to measure their competition, thinking about how they might make moves in the closing laps as Newgarden continues to lead, but he'll have to come to pit lane when we come back. Came into this race with a 15-point championship lead. Will Newgarden leave Texas? Still top of the championship. Watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by Booking.com. Be a booker at the world's number one choice for booking accommodations. The all-new Chevy Silverado. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. And NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar Series. Texas Motor Speedway under the lights and new race leader, Kevin called it earlier. He said Joseph Newgarden and that number two team still has a chance to win this race. Great strategy call, great execution. And Newgarden came in while we're in the break. This is a clean, fast stop and it has put the championship leader at the head of the pack. He pitted for those fresh tires on that last yellow and stunned me with the pace. Kevin Lee, that was amazing that Newgard was able to go fast enough to still make the stop and stay ahead. And Tim Sindrick made that call under that yellow. They were running not an eighth, only lost one position by coming in, topping off and taking fresh firestones. And I think Sindrick might have won Newgard in this race. It was all in the speed of those fresh tires. He was turning laps at 217 when the leaders were going 210s, 211s, Dixon and Rossi swapping the lead, saving fuel. So he really made up all the time loss. Dixon right there, closing now. Hunter Ray, we know, is in trouble on fuel. Newgarden, not in trouble, but Dixon now needs to chase, he needs to get by Hunter Ray and chase down Newgarden. Speaking of getting by, here's Colton Herter and uh, Simon Pagano going at it. This is a little further back. This is for sixth and seventh. And Graham Rahal just in the picture there behind Colton Herta in eighth. And it's amazing Colton's still on track because he's been absolutely walking the tightrope all night long, making bold moves. It doesn't seem to phase him one bit. By the way, you remember that wild crash suffered by Zach Beach? The Andretti Auto uh, Sport team have fixed the Gainbridge Honda, and Zach is back out on track. He never really hit anything hard, just bent the tow link, and they're back out running. How about Santino Ferrucci yet again? having a good, strong, consistent run in ninth. He's about eight seconds back of the leader. And this rookie, I mean, for no oval experience, has just really surprised Absolutely. a lot of people. He's eight seconds up the road from his very experienced four-time champ teammate. And he will leapfrog Felix Rosenquist at the top of the Rookie of the Year standings if he remains where he is. 39 laps to go. Here is Takuma Sato. Sato runs 18th and three laps, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, three laps down. He did lead the first 60 laps of the race after starting from pole position, but then had an awkward moment, Kelly, on his first pit stop. What a great sight this is to see. Chris Welch now released from the infield care center, and other than an ice bag there on your right wrist, it seems like you're okay. How are you feeling? 
Yeah, I'm all good. A uh, few aches and pains. They did a bunch of x-rays. Nothing's broke. Scraped up knee, you know, thanks to the IndyCar nurses and uh, Texas uh, infield care. They took good care of me. I'm just more frustrated that I'm not over the wall right now. You know, that's part of my job, and I enjoy doing it. But it happens. I'll be back out there next week, though. What was it like in the moment? Uh, I was just thinking about still trying to get up and do my job. You know, I got hit. I got knocked down. I got right back up. I got right back up and went right for the car to get it back in the box. I mean, that's what you're trained to do. That's just part of it. I'm right there doing it. So it happens. It's not the first time. You know, I've, I've had it happen here before. So that's just the danger of the job. These guys put their life on the line, and so do we. That's why we enjoy it. Great to see you're okay. Thank you. Thanks. That was a lucky escape for Chris. That's, that's, that's one two, tough dude. That's a two thumbs up for that guy. I want him on my crew anytime. Man. The Fitzgerald Chevrolet of Joseph Newgarden, championship leader, clearly in front and enjoying it after a masterful strategy call. Gets the points leader right up top. You saw it in non-stop, and it was a frightening fast crash for James Hinchcliffe. He got a big run on Rossi down the front straightaway when Rossi got checked up by Piggott and sent it in on the outside, and it looked like they came off the corner side by side, and it was almost just like Beach. He just snapped loose, Townsend. Well, it's good to see him get out. We'll have to see the replay again to really analyze what happened, but it's nice to see Hinch get on his feet. We got an in car as well with this car, so this will be great footage, and here we go. So he's on up on the outside there in the dirt, and watch, it just snaps. Big Just save. like Beach, barely hits the wall, but can't, same, can't get a hold of it. Same crash, except he wasn't able to keep it off that inside wall, and he hit pretty hard, that right rear toe link. Once that breaks, you're driving. It's like a forklift once that happens. Here's, Let's watch it again. Here's that run, so he sends it in, and Rossi stays there. right there Still with there. him on the inside. Still Spencer there. Pickett up ahead. Still there. It's gonna be one back, inside, inside, inside. Well, that track Clear. flattens out, Townsend. When that banking starts to drop off, he started pushing and he had a lot of wheel in it, and then it snapped on him. I mean, he had it, he was dirt tracking it, but he just ran out of room. You it's see the dust. You can see the dust coming off the car. It's up in the gray there. What a shame. It had been such a positive night for James Hinchcliffe, headed towards his best result of the season. By the way, safer barrier on the inside there. Thank and it's a good thing it, it turned around sideways and didn't go in nose first. What a shame, just such a good run going. Watch the Still eyes. There. Clear. It's gonna be one back, inside, 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 clear. Uh-oh. James apologized to the team. He said, we deserve a better result than that. And that's why he was All so right, frustrated. <sighs> but he was able to walk away. Who does this help? Ryan Hunter Hunter Ray. Ray. I tell you what, we're going to have some serious racing now. We're down, getting down to 25 to go. We got some guys on newer tires. It was obviously going to help. It took uh, quite a while to clean up Zach's accident. I don't know if they're going to be doing sweeping here or not. Hopefully some of these lap down guys are going to come in. Pits are open. We will pit. Pit, pit. Everybody's going to take tires, I think, Townsend. Well, I think, I think the tires are I think tires are king. Ten cars on the lead lap, so I would expect most, if not everybody, to think about yeah. taking tires. If you're Newgarden and Dixon, I think maybe you think about staying out and keeping the track position. But further back, I say gamble. 26 laps to go. And with fresh tires and old tires on a restart, we're in for a classic one here in Texas. Well, think about the Indianapolis 500. Last 13 laps, that was phenomenal. Yeah. And New then we're going to get the same New again. Oh. Stays out. Dixon stays out. These guys are going to take freshies, and he'll take a little bit of fuel. So we're going to have a little bit of a tire war going on, Kelly. Well, and there was debate on Ryan Hunter Ray's radio whether or not they were going to bring him to pit road, but obviously they do for some fresh Firestone tires. A little bit of that Speedway fuel, and you saw half a turn of front wing go into Ryan Hunter Ray's car. The only challenge for Hunter Ray is other cars come to pit lane is the lap cars. I think the wave by doesn't happen until 15, like 15 to go. Yeah. And so we'll see how many laps they sweep here. Does IndyCar sweep?
for 10 laps under yellow and give a chance for those lap cars to get out of the way. Hey, four fresh Firestones on. Do you remember he did this a couple of years ago at Iowa? Oh, yeah. He yeah. came in. He came in for the tire call, and we were saying this is going to be interesting, and he just chewed the field up. It could be the same again for Captain America. We'll see what Ryan hunter Ray can do with those fresh Firestone tires coming oh. back to green. Going to be a lot of fun to watch. A lot of cars to pass. He cycled out in 10th place right now. Well, he'll be running flat out. Your advantage is you got new tires and you're running flat out. Ryan on board here. See that? See the handprint on top of his helmet? You don't know that part of the story. Ryan and Becky, they're such great parents. Uh, and they have three beautiful little boys. Ryden, Roxon, and Rhodes, and all three kids have their handprints on Daddy's helmet. It's just one of those little things that you can do for your kids, right? And he's a great dad, great champion. We'll see if he can be a Texas winner for the first time tonight. Looks like maybe one to go at the flag stand, so that's going to be tough for Hunter Ray because he's going to have to get around all these lap cars to get back up into the mix. Bourdais is going to be the next car for position on that lead lap, but it's going to take some work. So that 28 car is going to go big on this restart if he's got a chance to win tonight. Well, they better get lined up because they're going to be coming around in a hurry. These guys are lollygagging back yeah. here. So they're coming to green. Yeah, they got to get all bunched up. Hunter Ray's a long ways back there. They're coming down the back straightaway now. Lights are off on the pace car, ready to go. Joseph Newgarden, points leader. Scott Dixon, defending race winner and reigning champion. Alexander Rossi, Colton Herder. This is great. We're going to have in-car from Hunter Ray. We won't miss any of the action up front. See what kind of jump. He's going for a big jump. Look at him lay oh, back. No. And it, it, stacks, up. it stacks up and they go. Look. Oh, man. Oh, he was rolling, looking rolling, for rolling. the big monster run. Here we go. Watch Dixon. Watch that orange and blue car. Dixon's going for the win on the restart. He gets around. Oh, they Joseph touched. Newgarden. Oh. Newgarden says, no way. Not right now. They touched wheels on the entry to one. Right front to left rear. Newgarden to Dixon. And here oh, comes Colton Herta. Colton Herta on the he high side. He was in side. the wall, I think. Wow. Herta went on the attack. He was following Dixon's oh, lead. Now here comes Rossi. The crossover again for Herter. He's right there. Will he send it down? Watch Rossi. Hunter Ray send side. it too. You got too outside much action outside. going on. Hunter Ray looking low. Outside. Outside. Here He's comes Colton there. Herta again outside. to the high side. What a brave driver. Right oh. around the outside. Rossi, he can't do anything about it. He's going to tuck back into the draft. 21 laps to go. Oh. And for Hunter Ray, he needs help on those lap cars, and Sato's not making it easy. Here he comes again, Dixon, but look at Herda. Herda's going to send it on the outside again. It's so dirty up there. That's what got Hinchcliffe. He's got to run. Oh, man, he's going for it. Oh, inside now. Colton Herda. No Dixon. way. He's no, going to wreck them no. both. Oh, man, Colton Herda, Dixon in the wall. That was very ambitious, and it just didn't pay off. <laughs> oh my! Wow. Colt there was, was below no, the white line. It was just not on there. He was. There was no way he was backing off. He had the Cole, big run. Okay, buddy. He made the move, but it's Dixon was protecting, and he went in there and just didn't back off. It was. Nice to see both drivers are okay. Those are big crashes. And this Colton is, Herta gets out. This is bad for the championship for Dixon. Let's not forget the championship. And let's see how this is. Look at Colton Herta's signaling down to Dixon. Got a big run down the back straightaway, and he sent it in there on the inside, and there's not a lot of room in there. That's like threading the needle, and he got on the white line. It went loose, got into Dixon, and turned him. You know, I'll be curious to see the back stretch. I said it wasn't on, but Colton had a pretty good run going, and Dixon was kind of mid-track and then mid-corner on the entry to turn three. So let's watch. We're on board with Rossi. That's Colton Hurd up ahead. Below the white line on entry. Yeah. And he came Oh, oh my oh. God, that was close. Wait, 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 wait. Wow, what a Holy. save. What a save from Rossi. I've never seen that. 
Here we go, different angle. So watch the white line. He goes below it. Not yet. Right there, he's below it. Yeah. And then he's on it right there on the apron, and he got loose, and it just walked up the track and into the side pot of Dixon. Ah, it's a tough call because he had the run. Dixon had already proactively defended to the inside, and Colton just forcing it there below the line. What do you think, Paul? I mean, it's a ra I think it's a racing incident. It's just one of those things. They're both racing hard. It's the end of the race. This is the, this is Texas, baby. You got to go big. Yeah. And for both cars, they're in the wall. They're wrecked. It doesn't matter what race control thinks because both of them are out. There's Ryan Hunter Wright able to get through. That's safe from Rossi. Are you kidding me? You're going from 20 degrees of banking. Watch this. This section of the track is dead flat over here. You get down below there, watch how loose it gets oh. right away. Complete opposite lock. One-hander. He's reaching for the wheel, wasn't he? He was trying to grab it back. Oh, wow. That was one hand on the bowl and one hand for balance. We knew that we were going to have an exciting end to the race. We're not done yet, but uh, wow. And one man who was involved in an incident that was pretty wild as well, James Hinchcliffe. He's with Robin. Well, we were watching the replay of that crash, but Hinch, you had a hell of a car tonight. I think you ran third and fourth most of the evening. You made a, a nice pass on, on Colton Herta, but then what happened? Yeah, you know, late in the race, we were all just kind of running lockstep there. It's tough to pass, and uh, we caught some traffic. I was trying to use that lap car as a pick on Rossi and got a good run on the outside. And then I just wasn't sure where he was going, so I tried to kind of just keep it in some clean air, got up in the gray, and then pushed up to the wall, and the car just snapped up there. I clipped the right rear, and then you're sort of along for the ride. So my fault on forced error. I'm just gutted for the number five guys because the car was fast. The crew was good in pit lane. You know, the car was quick when we needed to be. We were just kind of working our way through it, but man, we just, we just can't catch a break. You know, not that this one was bad luck. This one's on me, but uh, I'm, I'm just gutted, man. These guys deserve a good result. It's just been a tough year. All right, thanks for your honesty and your time. Lee? James Hinchcliffe. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, what a shame because he had a terrific run going tonight. Yeah. So now with 16 laps to go in another lap, the w lap cars are going to be waved down pit lane and get out of the way for Ryan hunter Ray. He'll be on much fresher tires in seventh place when we come back. It's going to be a good one. Scott Dixon's PNC Bank Honda on the hook, going back to the paddock. What a shame. And not the first time that he's been in a pretty scary crash here at Texas Motor Speedway. This was going back to 2017 and Takuma Sato. Tag Dixon and the NTT data car went around. Similar tonight with Colton Herter as we check in with Robin Miller. He's with Scott Dixon. All right, Dixie, we're glad you're okay. What happened in, from your standpoint? Yeah, I just uh, heard looking, looking, so I started to track down just to try and close it off. You know, it's towards the end of the race. And then as I looked down the entry, he, I could saw the, saw the shadow on the apron. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to work out. So sorry if it was my fault. Um, you know, I was pushing, trying to get the most out of it. And, uh, you know, ended both of our days. So I feel bad for, for Colton. Glad you're all right. Thanks for your time. Here we go, let's go. Back to green. Pagano is quick. Pagano and Ray Hall are quick to pounce. Santino Ferrucci's having a look up the inside. Around the outside oh, goes Ray Hall. Oh, it's going to be close. And look at Hunter Ray back there hunting. Ray Hunter Hall. Ray on fresh tires trying to get by all these cars at one time here. We're three wide down the back straightaway. Santino Ferrucci on the inside of Pagano. Ryan Hunter Ray we ride with. Oh, if he can clear these few cars, he's going to be in really good shape. He's got to make it happen soon, though. Only 12 laps to go. Up front, Rossi looking on Newgarden. Erickson right there with Hunter Ray having a great run in the Aero Schmidt peterson car. This is first and second, though. Big gap back to third. Oh, look at Hunter Ray. He cleared him. Hunter Ray's up to fifth. He's coming hard now. This could be Iowa all over again. Fresher tires and on the oh, attack. Comes Here Rossi. goes Rossi. This is looking good. Can he send it on the Still outside? There. He hasn't been able to Still do there. it all night, but he'll Still hold there. He can't do Still it. There. He doesn't oh, have enough front part to hold it on the outside. Smart from Rossi to back off. He knows how hard it is to stay side by side through one and two. Ten laps to go. I want to know where's Hunter Ray. He's only 1.9 seconds back now. Tell you what, 
New Garden's doing exactly what Pagano did at Indy. He's protecting the inside. He's going to make Rossi go the long way. There's Hunter Ray. He's got to close the gap in a hurry because nine laps to go. Oh, look at fast. the motor. Look that at the run he has coming on Ferrucci. How about fourth place Santino Ferrucci? The rookie is having a phenomenal drive, trying to hunt down Graham Ray Hall, riding with Hunter Ray again. New Garden weaving down the back straightaway already, doing exactly what wow. Pagano did in Indy, but here comes on the outside. He can't do it. He hasn't been able to pull that move off all night. Rossi's car is phenomenal, but look at the weaving, just like Pagano and Indy. On board with Rossi. Wow, Rossi gets such a good Big run, run. on turn four. Here he comes. Maybe he's going to go low this time. No. Seven to go. No pressure behind. Oh, he's oh. going to get him. Send it. He Send might it. Have it. No way. Can't New Garden do it on the other side. There. New Garden is relentless on that inside run. He did it to Dixon earlier on a restart, and Rossi's tried two, three times. He's got to time that exactly right to beat New Garden to the line. Look at the car coming off the corner as he's setting this up to beat him at the line on the outside. Yeah, but Newgarden's stubborn for good reason. He's got the position going to the inside. Hunter Ray's gained half a second on these guys. He has to clear Ferrucci and Ray Hall, and Ferrucci's doing such a great job to pull Hunter to Ray off. Where the line is. Ferrucci in fourth place, rookie. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this run. Oh, boy. Look at this run. He wants the inside. Wow. Rossi's so close to the gearbox of Newgarden. He is, had to lift there. Is he setting up the final pass coming to the line? Is it going to be a, a record photo finish? So many times there have been, well, actually, three of the top ten closest finishes in IndyCar history have happened here at Texas Motor Speedway. We might see a fourth tonight. Four laps to go at the line. New Garden coming down the back straightaway last lap Four like that Cobra go. Snake. If New Garden can hang on and do this, well, then we won't remember the strategy call. We'll remember the determined driving. This will be a wow. phenomenal victory if New Garden can do it. New Garden driving right up to the wall on purpose, trying to take all the air off the nose of Alexander Rossi and then slithering his way on that back straight. Three laps to go. Rossi's lost touch a little bit. He's got to close that gap and get a run down the back straightaway. It looks like Newgarden is forcing his car into an understeer state on the exit of two. Further back, Ray Hall, Ferrucci, and Ray Hall all holding position. I think it's getting harder now for Ryan Hunter Ray to take advantage of the fresher tires. Two to go, three miles, that's all. And Joseph Newgarden will change what has been a pretty miserable history here in Texas. He's only had one top 10, and that was an eighth place finish several years ago. That's a big gap to gain now for Rossi. One to go now. Newgarden has done exactly what he needed to do by breaking that draft and using and mirror driving and taking the air away from Rossi. Didn't qualify where he wanted to. Started seventh and well, was running around off. seventh and eighth all race long. A terrific call from Tim Sindrick, the president of Team Penske. And then Joseph has done the rest up front, out in front, under the lights. Wins in Texas. There. Joseph Newgarden, championship I'm leader. Nice. Nice. Wins in an impressive style. Wow. Oh, what? You guys, good job in the pit. There you heard Hard it. Work. That's all you tonight, guys. What a strategy call from that guy right there in the white shirt, Tim Sindrick, president for Team Penske. He does it again for Joseph Newgard with just perfect strategy. And get, let's not forget his race engineer, Gavin Ward. While Formula One is in Canada this weekend, Gavin spent many years at Red Bull Racing and now has made his home at Team Penske and another win. That's win number three on the season for Joseph Newgarden. Let's go to Team Penske now. Yes, and of course, so much congratulations. You talk about engineering, but you also have to look at the strategy part with Tim Sidrick. And Tim, you made that call to come in and get some fresh tires on that caution. Many other people didn't take that opportunity, but Joseph had to deliver the lap times to make that work. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it was a team effort tonight. I mean, we had to have good pit stops all night, and track position was key, as you saw. Um, but really, it was, it was the fuel that we needed there to run those extra laps to run hard. So, um, yeah, we made something out of it. 
When you give up track position, that's kind of a risky move. What, what thought to roll the dice and give up some track position knowing it might come back at the end? Well, I thought we were really, we really only had three or four cars on the lead lap behind us, so I thought a couple of those guys would come and we'd give up one or two, and uh, it worked out just right. And you can hear <laughs> major celebrations down here at Penske Racing, Robin. Well, Colton Hurd and I watched the last 11 laps. He says, pretty damn good race, and I said, you made it that way most of the night. What, how was your, did Dixon and you talk after the crash? Yeah, he, he apologized, and, and that's what it seemed like from my point of view. I haven't seen a replay or anything yet, but uh, I, he just turned down on me from my point of view. Um, I was there. He put me on the apron. I was more than enough ahead, and he didn't need to do it. The outside lane was there. He could have run the outside, but, um, yeah, he, like I said, must not have known. Uh, but, yeah, really happy with how the car was. The guest green car, all the boys did an amazing job. Big congrats to Andy Carr for, for bringing the update to the front wing and the new tires because it made the racing a hell of a lot better. So we'll keep trucking. Um, you know, this is a DNF that, that I'll take because I was really happy with my performance. So You should be. Lee, he was the show for a long time tonight. Oh, sp some spectacular passes all throughout the race. It's a shame for both drivers that it ended that way. But wow, Texas has done it again. Texas Motor Speedway has done it again. And so too has Joseph Newgarden. You could hear how much it meant to his team. All the screaming and yelling and celebrating. Three times a winner this season. This is a championship year for Joseph Newgarden. He has led all but one race this year as far as the championship points. And he extends his lead now. That was a phenomenal job. First win at Texas Motor Speedway for Joseph Newgarden. After that massive wreck a couple years ago, that was what really gave him Townsend the opportunity to get to Penske. After he had that crash, broke his wrist, was upside down, doing broke a 50, collarbone 50 50 grind down the front straightaway. And I think Roger Penske was just so impressed with the grit and the fearlessness with which Newgarden came back to ultimately race at Road America, then win in Iowa. And now he's just expen extended that championship lead. And he'll roll into this pretty unique Texas Motor Speedway <laughs> victory circle. Guns a-blazing. Great run, by the way, too, for Graham Rahal on the podium. Yeah, on quiet, the podium. Quiet he's night. We didn't show him much all night, but he just steadily worked his way forward and gets a podium finish. Well, I think Jan Bika said it best. Newgarden performed when he had to on those fresh tires, oh, yeah. on the restart, doing the pace to make that strategy work. His his commitment into turn one was phenomenal because Dixon was there. I thought he had it, and he and then Rossi was the same multiple times, and Joseph just would not give up that lead. How about that? Joseph Newgarden becomes the first three-time winner in 2019. Win number 13 in his IndyCar career. Penske has won 10 of the last 14 ovals, and he expands his championship lead. Let's let this greeting take place. Tim Sindrick helped Joseph Newgarden win this race. That's Gavin Ward, the former Formula One Red Bull engineer, in his first year as the lead engineer in IndyCar. What a run for Team Penske and the Fitzgerald Glider Kits team. Joseph, your first super speedway win. I know Cindric got to you to the lead, but young man, you got it done on track. Uh, How did you hold off Rossi? It's these guys, man. They keep putting me out front. I'm just trying to get it done in the end. But uh, how about this Fitzgerald car? It looked good. Great to have the Fitzgeralds here tonight. Um, you know, I knew we had a rocket ship. It was just about getting to the front. We were we were better in the front than we were in the back. So I knew if we could get some position, we would be okay. But Team Chevy doing a great job for us. Um, just a good day to capitalize on some points. These guys put me in position, so it's all up to them. Last restart, Alexander Rossi had a couple of good runs on the outside. How did you make it stick on the low line and keep him behind you? Yeah, he was fast. I mean, honestly, um, you know, he ran a great race. They, uh, both him and Dixon ran me really fair at the end. It was hard to get away on the restart. That was my biggest concern was just getting the jump going back going again. And uh, he was good, man. I, he was just hard to hold off. He was so good in dirty air. Uh, I saw him earlier in the race how good he was behind people. So I knew... You know, it was going to be tough. It was going to be really tough. But you saw the speed I had in the front stretch just to hold him off. So thanks to Team Chevy. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's a good day in Texas, man. I'm glad we finally figured this place out. It's been you, a while. You've won three other ovals, but this is the biggest track you've won on. Any significance to breaking through? You've been fast on big tracks, but getting a win now. You know, we've been close here before. Um, not necessarily at the end of the race, but I just I know we've had good cars here, and we've not been able to just make it happen. You know, one thing happens or another. Um, so just to finally figure it out, it's been great. St. Pete was that way for me, too. I knew we could win a race there, and we just hadn't gotten it done. So finally figured it out tonight. I'm so pleased for these guys, man. They work hard for this. Thanks for the entertainment tonight. Yeah, thank you guys. Joseph Newgarden expands his championship lead. Greetings from the captain. More to come from Texas Motor Speedway. Newgarden from Victory Lane. Talk us through the, the way that you managed to thread through. It looked to me like it just opened and you just slid through. Yeah, I was lucky. Uh, we got that uh, capstone guess and Jody Honda through there. And um, going down onto the apron at that highest speed is always sketchy. But, um, you know, luck, I guess, from that standpoint was on our side today. And uh, we were able to come through and, and get second place. But it's um, still disappointing, I think. You know, without that yellow, Scott and I were looking uh, really good on fuel mileage compared to the others. And um, ultimately, it wasn't meant to be. But here nor there, uh, you know, there's, there's now we're into the second half of the season. There's a lot of uh, really strong tracks for us coming up. So, you know, it's, it's if we've learned one thing from from last year, it's you just got to keep collecting points and uh, just keep keep being up front. And uh, eventually we'll get there. It's just unfortunate that the guy we're chasing the championship uh, is the one that's able to come out on top. But uh, we'll re reset, take a well-deserved break for the whole team and uh, come back strong in North America. Thank you, Alex. And of course, that was some incredible driving. And by the way, he was favoring and holding his left wrist, Kelly. We saw the way he was holding the steering wheel. Apparently, there were cramps and some pain for Alexander Rossi, but he brought it home. Oh, quite a save. Well, for Ryan Hunter Ray, he led the most laps tonight, 90 in all. Bass has settled for a fifth place finish after that strategy call just didn't quite work out for you. Did you have the car to beat tonight? Yeah, I thought for sure tonight was the night where we were going to pull this uh, 28 DHL car into, into victory lane. and. Uh, Get some cowboy hats, shoot off some guns, but it wasn't meant to be. Unfortunately, um, just leading that much maybe, I guess, put us in a position where we were pitting a lap or two early, and then that kind of snowballed on itself, and it became a fuel mileage race with the way the yellows f fell. So nothing really went our way again tonight, but uh, we definitely showed that we were here and um, showed we were fast and capable of winning. It's unfortunate uh, that we couldn't turn this into a W because I think it was a, a night to take advantage of, no doubt. I mean, these guys did a great job. Car was awesome, but then I, it got to a point where I was, I was in the most extreme fuel map just letting guys go just to try and make it, and it, it was a disaster after that. So big thanks to the guys. Um, you know, we'll move on, go to Road America, hopefully get a win there, and um, hi to the family at home. You know, Becky, I know my oldest ride and stayed up for this one, so I was really hoping to uh, to get a win for him and uh, my younger two, Rocks and Rhodes, but uh, it'll have to wait. All right, three straight top five finishes now for Ryan Hunter Ray. Robin? All right, Graham Ray Hall, 11 to third. Nice job, kid. Kind of steadily progressed all night. It looked like a fun race. Yeah, it was good. You know, if your car was good enough, you could you could pass. Uh, you know, I mean, we made a couple moves on the outside into one. The second lane was starting to come in there a little bit in one and two. I think over time, this track's going to get better. Um, you know, when they first repaved it, did the lime wash, it definitely hurt, you know, the grip. But I just think with more races, cup guys, us, everything else, uh, more races, that second lane's going to come in in one and two. But, yeah, you know, our fleet cost and care guys did a great job tonight because, um, you know, that first stop was awesome. We went a long ways. Honda did an amazing job on the fuel mileage. I mean, we could go forever. But uh, in the end, I'm happy. You know, we, we get a weekend off. Our guys worked awfully hard. And to finally be rewarded just a little bit feels, feels pretty good. All right, kid. Nice job. Lee? Yeah, really good job there by Graham Rahal. Best finish of the year. Remember, he was headed for that podium at Long Beach and then got that stripped and dropped back a position. This is the unique celebration. Here at Texas Motor Speedway, there's track president Eddie Gossage to the left. Twenty nineteen just has that special feeling about it for Joseph Newgarden, doesn't it? He has won now three times, and two of those, including the win on the streets of St. Petersburg and here in Texas have had that really good strategy element, that decisive call, and then he has done the rest and extends his championship lead, celebrating by shooting the guns and the cowboy hat. And it's not only Joseph Newgarden who's enjoying being on top of the overall points, but now Santino Ferrucci leads Rookie of the Year standings, Kelly. 
I think he likes the side of that. 193 points now for Santina Ferrucci, a new career best. For a kid that had no prior oval experience, you sure have taken to it. How'd you get it done tonight? Now you're making me look too good. <laughs> no, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm out of words. Uh, the crew on pit lane, my spotter, Poncho, Clydeo Manufacturing, Honda, oh my God. Talk about a, a dream come true. I mean, qualifying is obviously not what we wanted, but I was pretty confident in our race car. My engineering just gave me something that was so good, so good underneath me. And uh, it's it's so nice to drive through the front and have something confident underneath you and race these guys like Graham up front and Hunter Ray behind me for the last stint there was like nerve wracking as hell. <laughs> he is so fast. It's like he, they're up there talking to me every second like, you got to do this, you got to do that. I was just like, oh man, I got two laps to go. <laughs> just hold on to it. He did it. Job done. Fourth place finish there for, for Santino Ferrucci. Best career result. Not too many come to Texas Motor Speedway finishing the top five. First time out. Here are the championship points. Big picture. Newgarden extends by a further 10. Perfect weekend for Joseph Newgarden. Rossi, I mean, Rossi's just, he's the star of all these races these days, it seems. He makes it so exciting. And I got to say, I've been watching this sport a long time. One of the best saves I've ever seen to keep it out of trouble when Herta and Dixon got Remember together. Remember what we said at the beginning of the night, that 100-point threshold, Will Power, a bad night, and goes to 113 down from his teammate. That's the danger zone as we go into the second half of the season now and focus on who's the top five guys in the championship. And remember, with that crash, Scott Dixon now is 89 back, so it's tough on him as well. Meanwhile, there's only one three-time winner this year, and that is Joseph Newgarden. Started as a hot day. We knew we were gonna see action like we always do here in Texas, and that's one proud-looking cowboy, and he set this place on fire, no doubt. Phenomenal performance. First win at Texas Motor Speedway. This place is hard to win at, and now Newgarden has finally done it. What a performance from the number two team, that Fitzgerald Chevrolet and Team Penske. Coming up next, it is off the grid. And a reminder that after a five-week stint, IndyCar gets a brief break. It continues on NBC Sunday, June 23 at noon Eastern. The Rev Group Grand Prix at Road America. Boy, there was a lot to remember here tonight for good and for bad. A wild ride for many and a victorious one for Joseph Newgarden. <laughs>